Here we go. Let's do this, bitch. Going live. It says we're live. If are we the live? Chat could confirm because we are. We have had a time <laughs> arriving at this point. It's been a journey, as we say on this podcast. Does do, are we there? Does anyone see us? Oh, I popped out the chat. No, I can't see it. <laughs> no. <laughs> oh, I am chaos too. Wait, Miguel says Miguel. we're live. Great. <laughs> Wonderful. We love to hear that. This is Everybody. why we have Miguel. Hi. Yes. This I is also why we had Lana doing backstage <laughs> tech support for the last 12 minutes. Blind. Couldn't see, couldn't see what Anne was doing. It was she'd assured me she was a thing to behold. Okay, Anne, introduce your podcast. Hi. Hi, everyone. Welcome to Vulgar History Live, a professional organization led by myself, the most technically qualified. Um, <laughs> regrettably, I'm the one with the ability to press the go live button and we couldn't find it for 12 minutes, but we're here. <laughs> um, we didn't I know it existed for the coming. first four. <laughs> no, I mean, now I kind of know what to do. Anyway, welcome everybody. This is Vulgar History Live. I'm Anne, Could, I'm Anne Foster, the host of Vulgar History Podcast. Could you both introduce yourselves, please? I will go first alphabetically. I'm Allison Epstein, not the host of Vulgar History. Anna Witt Johnson, Anna. Um, the tech support of Vulgar History. And we're grateful you're here. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to hold up my cup. Allison, do you, ha do you have a copy of your book at all? Oh, I'm literally always ready to show it to people. It is right off screen at any time. Thank you, thank you. This whole this came out on Tuesday. Yeah, yeah. Um, this whole episode, it's Proud. like one percent because we did the Mary Queen of Scots twenty-hour season, but really, it's because Allison's book just came out, and we're here to talk about that. <laughs> it has nothing to do with Mary Queen of Scots. I should be clear for the chat, but <laughs> and it will be clear with the chat if you want to talk about Allison's book. VulgarHistory.com/slash/bookclub is where we're doing that. Today we're talking about the Mary Queen of Scots movie. And I do want to shout out someone who just mentioned Miguel, live from Peru, is moderating the chat. And thank you so much, Miguel, for doing that. We love you, Miguel. We love really, you, we Miguel. Really do. Thank you. Wait, I popped out the <laughs> chat especially... and I can't see the chat. I know, it just disappears. No, I see Everything the chat. Is I see the chat. <laughs> we're gonna try to check in on the chat, but like Miguel. Official South American representative is here holding it up in the chat. Yes. Um, just a sec. I had my chat set to something. There we go. I have mechanic dog here. That's who I was showing you. She, she, if I disappear and start look like I'm screaming off screen, that's that's why she's seven months old. Allison, Emily in the chat says she was reading Let the Dead Bury the Dead while she was waiting for the live to start. That's why we did a dramatic late entrance for everyone to finish whatever chapter they were on. Thank you, Emily. <laughs> <laughs> you can't stop when you're in the middle of a chapter. Can't stop. Can't stop. Um, okay. So, you know, I'm just taking a few calming breaths personally after everything that just transpired. Um, wait. I couldn't find my thing. So what we're here to talk about is the 2018 film Mary Queen of Scots, no comma, Mary Queen of Scots. Was that controversial to scholars? It was. It was. Because <laughs> and then they saw the movie and they're like, oh, there's so much more controversy to be had. Fuck <laughs> the <a> comma. <laughs> but there was there was upset about the comma. People, um, you know, because her name is technically Mary, comma, Queen of Scots. Anyway, people are mad about it. I well, will also either, say that either and. And Lana and I have been really restraining ourselves from talking about this movie before now. I've said so many times to both of you, save it for the live, save it for the live, because there's a lot to get into in this movie. I was truly saying, uh, comma. I have to say about the comma, it's either comma or the. You can't have neither or. Like, it's Mary Queen yeah. of the Scots or Mary, comma, Queen of Scots. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> 
but this movie is a th- is a third other thing, and that's a <laughs> choice that goes on throughout the film. It's which we will discuss. It says fanfic, <laughs> and that's so usually. <laughs> Usually with these, so this is, I mean, so there's the Vulgar History Podcast, and this is Vulgar Peace Theater. And so Allison and Lana join me every so often. I used to be like every month, but guess what? Mm-mm. Not lately. <laughs> life um, life anyway, happens. Could do. <laughs> things have been going on. But anyway, so we talk about costume dramas. And the way that this usually works is that we start off by describing because usually one of the three of us chooses the film, and that's because one of the three of us is familiar with the time period. In this case, I would say the three of us have roughly equivalent <laughs> knowledge of, of the topic of this film. Mary, please. We talk. all have the same <laughs> knowledge, and the knowledge we have is the 20 hours that we jointly recorded about this. <laughs> the feelings. We have all of the feelings about this film. We're we each have our the- own little sub areas of specialty where we're extra mad, but I think we have the same working knowledge here. Um, oh, no. oh, some people are having trouble with your internet, Lana, somebody said. I don't know. The cobbler's children has no shoes. I get my fiber connection sometime in the next two months, so I'm very sorry. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. I will do my best. All we can do is just send positive vibes towards yeah. the city where you are. Thoughts and prayers to Minnesota. Um, okay, so we're talking. Anyway, so the three of us. All- so Lana is coming in with the knowledge of this of this season of the podcast. Um. A- anyway, we're coming with this, but Lana already knew all this stuff already, and we're- we've just all caught up to Lana. <laughs> That's actually the truth, yeah. <laughs> that's where we're at. That's that's where this... And can't yeah. emphasize enough how hard it is to reach the Lana Wood Johnson bar of knowing about a thing. So, go us, me and Anne. Really. <laughs> Very proud it of you. It all took was six months of research, 20.5 hours of podcasting. <laughs> a partridge in a pear tree. It was a lot. <laughs> what? It was my entire middle what? school years. <laughs> yeah, so... Um, so in terms of this film, though, did I watched it in 2018? Did either of you see it before this? Oh, I saw it in the theaters. Did you? The first draft of a tip to the hangman times. So I was like starting to learn about Mary Queen of Scots, and I was yeah. Like, oh, I don't know anything. Maybe maybe this movie will teach me something. I said. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> It it taught you that uh, David Tennant can rock a beard. Oh, I knew that about David Tennant. I never <laughs> doubted David Tennant. Yeah. I I okay, no, I'm saving it for when we get to David Tennant. No, nope, putting it back. <laughs> um, Lana, I don't think you had seen the movie until now. Is that correct? I had not seen the movie very intentionally until now. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. See, I thought it you're was safer for this everyone. Is part of why. No, this is part of why I'm never going to force you to watch Rain because th- <laughs> this movie is like five percent. What Rain? I got presents. mad about the dog. Oh. You just got mad before about we the- even got any words in. in. <laughs> you got mad about the comma, so. I wasn't even googling it. I knew. <laughs> My. No, you don't do that. It's rude. <laughs> so this, it was interesting for me. I watched the movie in 2018 when it came out, which was roughly a year after Rain had ended. And as everybody knows, I was a mega fan of the TV show Rain. I'd been living in that show for four years. And I was like, how dare, how dare Saoirse Ronan do a Mary Queen of Scots movie when Rain was just on TV? Like she, this is Adelaide Kane is, anyway. So I went to see this movie. I'm like, okay, it won't be rain, but maybe it'll be fine. And compared to rain, I was like, wow, this movie is like, I guess this is closer to the truth. I thought to myself, because there's less, you know, pagan serial killers and ghost sex and things. And I'm like a lot less colorful costume wise. 
And so I watched it. I'm sure I didn't, I'm confident I didn't know who any of the men characters were. But this time I was like, oh my God, it's him. I was so excited when she's in the room with the assholes. I was like, oh my God, it's this guy. Oh, it's he always an exciting time when Anne recognizes the men. <laughs> it is so hard to make that happen in a movie. So honestly, it takes 20 hours of research for Anne to remember one man's name, even when all the men are named James. I did do some extra work on this movie. I looked on IMDb because I was just like, facially, I will say they did a fine job of making people look different with one exception, but that's okay because one guy, it was Scottish Machiavelli and Cecil. Those act, those looked a lot the same to me, but one was always in England and one was always in Scotland. So I was cool. I got it. But anyway, the other people, I'm like, who's this interesting person? I looked it up. I was like, it's Randy. <laughs> They put Randy Randolph in this movie? I was so excited. I was so excited because he's one of my faves. Loki, my fave. Um, <laughs> um, actually, Miguel just mentioned his Spanish streaming channel, called it uh, The Two Queens, he says, which I think would annoy Lana even more. Not even Mary's <laughs> name in the title. Um, as long as they didn't put Elizabeth's name in the title. Elizabeth and that other one. <laughs> Elizabeth and her cousin. I was I was telling the Discord channel the other day that I saw a TikTok video that um, it was about uh, Queen Elizabeth and her first cousin that she was in a love triangle with. And they went on to explain that it was Latisse Knowles because I was glad which cousin they specified because it was always going to be Robert Dudley. Yeah. Well, of course. Of course. There's one in this equation <laughs> well i think as i learned from this movie queen elizabeth is is just sort of like a desperate sad spinster lonely hysterical obviously who, sad who walking uterus who who cares a lot about, about her family, family. <laughs> she cares she just, a lot about her arts and crafts thing <laughs> okay, I can't wait until we get to the arts and crafts macrame miscarriage. I'm really <laughs> delighted to talk about that. Was, that. that was quilling. That was quilling. It's a so, very cool craft. I can't it. <laughs> okay, but no. your aunt doesn't do it because she's sad about her parents. Your aunt mom. doesn't say, could you just go no. rule the country? I need to finish my arts and crafts right now. <laughs> Which is she what Margot Robbie does in this movie. <laughs> I want to shout out numerous people who were participated in the making of this movie, just so we all know who their names are, because they're, you know, yes. the actors were on strike, the writers were on strike, people's work is important. So it was directed oh, by, forever. so Josie Rourke, who was a, um, and still is, like, <laughs> this movie is not old. Um, she's mostly a theater director. So I think she and Saoirse Ronan really, this was like a passion project for the two of them. So she came in, not, not usually a movie person, a theater person now. The last time we did a live was for the Lady Jane Grey movie, which was also directed by a mostly theater director. And I think this one at least is much more cinematic than Lady Jane Grey was. It was written by Bo Williman, who is a writer who's been involved in, I find this telling. He wrote um, some episodes of Andor. He wrote some episodes of House of Cards. His whole vibe is like political scheming, people talking to each other not in oldie times and i think that's what he was attempting with this film and you could have just said a man wrote this movie <laughs> and then we could have been done with the writing credits you actually didn't even need to say that but his work is important no Thank this is the most his... written by a man movie i've ever seen in my life <laughs> um, about women so about what's important to yes. women mm-hmm what is also notable, and I do want to shout out the connection between this movie and this podcast. Um, this movie was based on the Mary Queen of Scots biography by John Guy, which mu much of my episodes were also based on that biography. And I actually interviewed him and the episode is coming out tomorrow for the Patreons because he just wrote a new mm -hmm. book with his writing partner about Anne Boleyn. So when I watch this movie and it's like based on his book and I'm like, ooh, ooh like, no, it's not. <laughs> Can you imagine how he felt watching this movie? He's just like, take my name off of this film. I'm, a I'm getting from Rick Riordan vibes. <laughs> He's getting a hate mail from 
tutor enthusiasts and he's just like i didn't do this he got a good he got a paycheck for them licensing his book and good for him he was able yep. to use that money that to bank. research his Anne Boleyn book yeah okay. yeah good for writers to anyway it's having spoken with him um and also i do want to say like his writing partner slash wife um they were talking you're gonna hear it next week but about this Anne Boleyn biography they did like the minutia they were researching like these are people who are committed to like they don't put a fact in a book without having the specific letter and them having read the letter in the original French to like cite that the thing happened like they are so on it with the research so I'm just like this movie did they make him watch it I hope not <laughs> um Moving on to the main people who who were award nominated for this film, costuming, hair, and makeup. When you look up, they were Oscar nominated for the costuming as well as for the hair and makeup. And okay, I have thoughts about the makeup, but let's talk about the costuming first. <laughs> oh, and a lot of the like, <laughs> other 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 um, awards bodies did. Like I think the costuming association, like th these, this is a very the costumers like this movie the makeup people like this movie they appreciate their friends who did the stuff in this so because they did a lot you know what and i don't when you don't do a lot you get cyrano and I would probably... oh i'm not against doing a lot <laughs> no just, it was a lot of we'll get to it a lot of denim um choices were made so the, co mm -hmm. the costuming was was done by alexandra byrne um, who you may know she did the costuming for Emma, the one with Anya Taylor-Joy, which had excellent clueless references in the Regency costuming. The costuming in that is really good. She did some Marvel stuff. She also was a costumer for Elizabeth and Elizabeth the Golden Age, starring Kate Blanchett. So she's got experience that costuming Elizabeth. Costumes. And Mary, yeah. So I think she probably... She did what she was called upon to do, which was like, put this bitch in denim. She's like, say no more. <laughs> <laughs> she also did the costume because of the movie of the Phantom of the Opera. Um, which has in one scene. <laughs> you have to watch that for Vulgar Peace Theater at some point. It'll we might. tank my average, it's which I already historical. <laughs> There's a scene in that, 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 that movie. Lena. But Emmy Rossum wears, wears a whole coat. <laughs> She wears like a full Empress Cece ensemble with stars in her hair in that movie. There's a big Cece inspired moment. She also did a costume for Maria Kenneth Ashton. Branagh's Hamlet. Awesome. Okay, Kenneth Branagh's Hamlet is my least favorite Hamlet because Kenneth Branagh, when he decided to play Hamlet, was like 55 years old. And it is deeply disconcerting to watch him try to be like 19. Allison, no, but he... And Kenneth Branagh. No, he bleached his hair though. I mean, so mentally. I know, and it didn't help. Okay, the hair and makeup team, like there's going to be some some real interesting facts here. Yeah, I so, so. <laughs> so I do want to differentiate. So the makeup and hairstyling designer, like the person who came up with the concepts is Jenny Shurkor, who is 2019. He's to blame for Elizabeth. <laughs> Oscar nominee for this, but you know what she did? The hair and or makeup for? Ned Kelly starring Heath Ledger. <laughs> A film I do not remember for its hair or makeup. <laughs> I was always happy to see a Ned Kelly <laughs> shout out. I was excited for that connection. She also did the hair and makeup for Elizabeth and Elizabeth the Golden Age. So this is a real reunion of these people. Um, hair and makeup for Phantom of the Opera. The 1993 movie, The Secret Garden. I don't know if you've seen that, but I love that when I saw it. Um, and she also, this is just like a, this is for the nerds out there. She also did the makeup for four episodes of Doctor Who in 1975. So... I love that you just said for the nerds out there, like there are people who are not nerds who are like, you want to know what I want to do on a Saturday night is live podcast about Mary Queen of Scots. That's <laughs> what the cool kids are doing. I bet, I bet you were live streaming at bars around America, right? <laughs> <laughs> That's true. That's true. So if there are any nerds in the audience, that was for you. <laughs> okay. Now we're going to get into some stuff. So first of all, RIP, I want to say, and like we can rip this movie to shreds but like just know that the head hairstylist has passed away from covid um mark mark pilcher so he did the so jenny shercourt designed everything but mark pilcher was also oscar nominated because he was there on the set every day wigs i don't know if if hairstyling involves face beards 
But I um, hope so. Anyway, but Mark Pilcher, he did this, and he also was the hair designer for Bridgerton, and he won an Emmy for Bridgerton like two weeks before he died of COVID. Mm. It's like there's it, a lot of really a lot nice of work. tributes to him. <laughs> He did. And some of his a lot movies, of work. Like he, mm-hmm. he's the Mary oh. Seaton of this movie. He's with his basket of wigs. Just ready yes. To yes. yes. His, the vibe of this movie is he's the Mary Seat. He is the spiritual descendant of Mary Seaton. Mark Pilcher, R.I.P. Your the hair is gonna be heavily discussed in this live. Honorary stream. fifth Mary. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So the um Jess Brooks was oh, the Oh, she's prim- the one I have the beef with. <laughs> <laughs> oh, really? Would it surprise you to know that her work before this was largely in prosthetics? Yes, that no. actually would surprise me a great deal. <laughs> because the prosthetic nose they gave to Queen Elizabeth looks like the first prosthetic <laughs> nose a person has ever made in their lives. This looks like this was a first pancake nose. We should have workshopped that one. <laughs> Marco Robbie's nose in this movie... Margot Robbie in general in this movie, if they were like, you know what, she doesn't really, is this the she right She wanted casting? an Oscar so bad. Let's put her in a nose. Let's put her in Why? a nose. Why? Is there something notable about Elizabeth I's nose that I'm not aware of? And why? But anyway. That's not a terrible, like, it didn't need to be that bad. They wanted her to be ugly. No, she's been an you Oscar. And after... Yeah, and I texted you after I watched this and said I'm saving the rest of this for the live, but I feel vaguely like uh, Margot Robbie's Elizabeth was anti-Semitic, and I don't know why. <laughs> now I'm thinking it's probably the nose. Nose is really bothering that might be. That is very fair. The nose. So they really brought in a prosthetics expert, but she's also the one who did the um, lead face makeup, which I think the chat is going to be interested to hear our thoughts on with Elizabeth. You know what she did a fine job of? Smallpox prosthetics. <laughs> I had to go Google smallpox after this just because I couldn't trust anything. Well, I don't know if it was accurate. Yeah, well, I don't know if it's accurate, but it certainly looked painful. Not especially. It looked painful, yes. It looked very painful. Yeah, looked oh, like by not. the way, I have a degree in historical demography. <laughs> <I know. laughs> yeah. I mean, at least I don't know. It, Most places. It really made me smallpox. I don't know why. No, but because it looked it like she looked f- painful and not pretty. But it looked like full face shingles. <laughs> so pretty. Is what it looked like. <laughs> Which I would imagine would be incredibly painful. Um, but here's the thing Queen Elizabeth, as we see in this movie, is a vain bitch. Well, you know what? She was a vain bitch. But, <laughs> yeah, but she was I mean, just I'm not, I'm not yeah. as I'm not as pretty as my cousin. So, you know, they really had to play up her skin. Okay. Lying on Cecil's. Management skills is what her problem was. <laughs> and we'll talk about his wig soon. <laughs> so um, those opening scroll is quite long. And I was intrigued to see because most of the movies we talk about do have an opening scroll to just set the scene for everybody. And this is like, <laughs> I did what, six hours of podcasts to set the scene for Mary arriving in Scotland. And they're like, let's do it in two <laughs> paragraphs. And so here's what they said. Mary, comma, Queen of Scots, was born a Catholic. As Protestants fight to control Scotland, the infant Mary is sent to Catholic France. At 15, she marries the heir to the French throne. At 18, already I feel this is like Star Wars adjacent over amount of detail for what people need to know. At 18, Mary is widowed and returns home. Scotland. Right is there, had- you've already summarized five seasons of rain in a sentence and a half. Yeah. So. Yeah. Yeah. So Scotland is now dominated by Protestants and governed by her half brother, brackets, Hollywood icon Jimmy Stewart. Um, but guess what? The scroll not done. Elizabeth is England's Protestant queen. By birth, Mary has a strong claim to England's throne. Her very existence threatens Elizabeth's power. I'm going to say that was not very clearly written. I know the deal. And I was like, what? Okay. So to the average person coming in to be like, hey, let's see a cool Marco Robbie movie. I don't know what they're taking out of this. 
We didn't get the cool little Lady Jane Grey family tree drawn on a napkin <laughs> to like start texting out people. Like that, that's what we needed. Here. That's what you needed. And this movie also needed, I have to say, Patrick Stewart. I don't know playing who, but you did get- he had just <laughs> randomly <laughs> appear and yell at people and I'll be fine. He would have been an amazing Scottish <sighs> Machiavelli. He would have been, he could have been Darnley's dad, <laughs> although Mr. Bates from Downton Abbey, that was a surprise to me. Um <laughs> Okay, England, 1587. So this is the year, so it starts off, it's like starting off when she's about to be executed and then the rest of the movie is like a flashback. So it starts off with a candle with like two sidewaysy facing wicks. I'm not sure what that means. Why did that candle? Um, those were nails. Those were, yeah. yeah, those were nails. And the so they fall off. Oh. Time. Oh. Time. Okay, yeah. thank you. Um, well, it's any clock then. Thank you, thank you. So, 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 some men walk down to a dungeon. Inside the dungeon, a woman sits on the floor at a Catholic altar. It is Mary, played by Saoirse Ronan. How does bitch get a Catholic altar in her jail cell? Is what I want to know. In How England, she, it was in, a, it was like cathedral. Like, bitch, how she do this? And this is in the, the tower. Period where she, in the tower. Yeah. Well, not in yeah. the tower. In, bring you in the north of England, but. Stand. No one is going to bring you an altar. <laughs> but you know what? Who is religiously tolerant is Elizabeth. Um, famously so. Famously so. So she's got an <laughs> updo. She's wearing a black outfit. Um, she walks outside into the snow at the same time. We see Elizabeth, played by Margot Robbie, with a bright red Ronald McDonald clown wig on. I'm going to ask, do you guys remember the Johnny Depp um alice in wonderland movie that came out not a long time before this movie the queen of hearts had the same wig that elizabeth has i yeah. think they yeah passed that wig along from set to set i think they so, did all I can do. elizabeth's wig becomes increasingly unhinged as the movie goes along um the color of it is frankly ketchup color by the end of it um so anyway mary walks into the execution <laughs> yes. yes yeah yeah mary seaton <laughs> appalled <laughs> it's not a color that would appear in nature <laughs> no okay so mary walks into the execution room and outfit reveal you know i've seen gifts of this moment of them ripping off <laughs> the velcro of her dress to reveal this inside red sort of nightgown thing the costume as much as this movie was costume nominated the costume bitches like the people who really care about historical accuracy were just like what the fuck in the <laughs> Magic Mike rip away dress. <laughs> like, I mean, fair. Like, she did have an outfit reveal, and you know what? This movie is on a time, they don't have time to be like, and then they like unlace the thing and, and then they put on the sleeves. But that was like pretty. Anyway, outfit reveal. Anyway, um, so she kneels, saying Latin prayers, and then, um, and then she puts her head down, and then her head looks up. <laughs> Um, and then it's like, ooh, flashbacks. So, and this is her Scotland 1561. So when she's first arriving in Scotland. So honestly, um, chat, let me know because I don't remember. One of Mary's arrivals somewhere, she did trip and fall. And everyone's like, oh no, is that a bad omen? And she's like, no, it's a good omen. And they're like, okay. Um, but I mean, she had bad luck everywhere she went. So when they show her tripping and falling, and I couldn't remember if that was when she arrived in Scotland or if that was her arriving in England or somewhere else. Anyway, so she's arriving. It's Mary. She's got the Marys. It's four people with the same hair, and their hair is Anne of Denmark cosplay. It's exactly how Anne of Denmark's hair is, who is the wife you know, 30 years later from this of Mary's son. Like it's the bit, it's this big dinner plate with like pins in it. Like that's, I've never seen anyone with a hair except for Anne of Denmark. So Mary Seton in this film slash Mark Pilcher has decided that this is their arriving in Scotland hair. Um, and then because I'd seen the movie before and I knew who this was, although they did not explain who they he was for a long time. It's Bothwell. For it is he is standing there greeting them, looking like kind of intense and like incel like. Um, Loud booze from the despite having already had two wives. You despite, know, despite currently having two wives. 
<laughs> currently having two eyes. Working on a third. <laughs> yeah. So the first time I saw this movie, I'd just be like, okay, there's some people. I don't know. I did not know that that was going to end up being the Bothwell character. But anyway, they, now that I knew that it was him watching it the second time, I'm like, oh, they did put him in this movie quite a bit. But Well, he said like 15 times, I promised to your mother that I would protect you. I'm like, oh, they found one fact about Bothwell. And yeah. <laughs> yeah. And then they made him a, her bodyguard. I mean, I have. Mm, okay. That yeah. was such a choice. They made lots of Bothwell choices. He's really very pleasant for so many parts of this film. He's silent. That's the only way Bothwell would ever be pleasant. Yeah. That There's, is true. So um, she arrives. She arrives, and as I recall, she arrived in this city that's like not like at a diff earlier than everyone expected. So there wasn't like a group of people there to meet her. So they had to like drive her out to see some people somewhere else. Anyway, so like people are there, and they a little girl looks at her while she's riding on her horse, and the girl is like looking at her like, "Oh my god, you're so cool!" And Mary's like, "I am. That's true." It's very <laughs> Knight's Tale, William Thatcher looking mm -hmm. up at the parade going by. Yeah. I want to be. I know the next movie is going to be about her. I don't know who that would be. Some little future Scottish person. Um, Flora MacDonald or somebody. That's, I was going to say that, yeah. Um, <laughs> so horses <laughs> go along a road. Um, one of the Marys has a dog. Lana, you had thoughts about the dog. One of the, Marys, one of the Marys has a Cavalier King Charles Spaniel. <laughs> mm -hmm. A Cavalier King Charles why would that be not appropriate for King Charles? Who was her grandson? Grandson? Great you know that great one? grandson. <laughs> so, yeah, it should have been, like, what are those little ones? Um, what are those little Scottish dogs? Those, like, little little McDuff dogs. Uh, yes, yeah, Scotty. <laughs> Scot Scottish Terriers. Yeah. Or I don't know, some sort of French dog. Anyway, so it's a, okay, St. Charles or King Charles. <laughs> King Charles. Um, King Charles. It's like, it's like there's a lot of dogs in this world. Why would you choose the one that is specifically <laughs> and clearly anachronistic? Yeah. Lots of dogs. You know it's so <laughs> it was very cute. <laughs> it was very cute. <laughs> and I love Cavalier King Charles. They're the sweetest babies. They could have had a corgi just to be like really. That would have um, been delightful. Can you imagine a corgi just like harumphing through the hills of Scotland? I did like. <laughs> I like the fact that there was a dog because in so much of the so many of the paintings of Mary from like the eighteen hundreds, they always put a dog in it. So everybody's think... stabbing Rizzio, and there's a corgi in the yeah. background being like, <laughs> "I help." Okay, so they they arrive at Holyrood Palace in Edinburgh, where we see for the first time in this film Hollywood icon Jimmy Stewart. Oh, do we ever? So I described him as Captain Jack Sparrow crossed with Mick Jagger, crossed with a Viking, crossed with Outlander. But what would you? It's how would like the Last Kingdom, ancient Britain, like a, a wild man who just crawled out of a swamp? He's wearing I, about three sandy packs. Everybody else in this film is awesome. I was a goth in the 90s. And he... <laughs> and, and, like, just looks like... Run fair, but he's not run fair. Like, every, that was, like, three people I knew from my goth time in the 90s. And who is the guy who's the band who sings with arms wide open <laughs> he looks like that guy um what what it, what words did you just say Cree? Arms with wide arms open. wide open yeah you know that song <laughs> well, now when i know the words are. Are. <laughs> yeah um miguel asked what was Hollywood icon Jimmy Stewart's first red flag in the movie, and I would say it's his outfit, hair, it's his and makeup. side part. <laughs> he doesn't even. Like, he starts wearing a headband <laughs> later on. Um, he's wearing Again, this like, like seventeen the brand necklace. The vibe is like, okay. Do you remember when I did the episode where I interviewed um, Jennifer, um, oh, Morag? Henderson. Um, 
sorry, I forget her last name, but she wrote, she was the one who wrote the book about Jean Gordon. And she was talking about how she saw this movie. And when he came out dressed like this, she burst out laughing because he was like the most Englishy, like he, the portraits of him, it's like very trim hair, trim beard, like very, like the fact that he's just like, he's wearing three fanny James packs. Got... James wants, even mentioned the he fanny wanted to... James got his wannabe English dick stuff from somewhere it wasn't entirely from his father <laughs> you know who he looks like he looks like the guy um who's the judge on great british bake-off last season um Paul Hollywood? <laughs> no the um <laughs> noel fielding noel <laughs> slash russell brand who was, also goth, who was also a goth in the 90s yeah, the i just want to point that out yeah, <laughs> yeah. His vibe is just like the mighty boosh. <laughs> he is, yeah, no. Uh, Miguel just mentioned his red flag was him immediately asking how long you're going to be staying, which fair, which fair, but also I feel like accurate. I feel like actual Hollywood, he would have 100% been like, Hey, welcome, how long are you staying? Can you go back to somewhere? <laughs> Alyssa just asked in the chat, Are we going to talk about his highlights? <gasps> can we? <laughs> Here's where I want to say Mark Pilcher, rest in peace, is like the <laughs> hair in this movie. It's like all of it is worth discussing. All of it is worth discussing. Who's touching up Hollywood icon Jimmy Stewart's roots, like everything. <laughs> I saw a picture of them at the I, premiere, I, and the actor, the actor does not have this hair or this beard. Like I think it's a David Tennant scenario. I think they just oh, of course put the hair and beard mm -hmm. on this person. I'm going to be real honest. Is... Those highlights look like me at my wedding. Because this is the yeah. only time in my oh, life no, I ever no. got highlights. <laughs> oh, it was funny. I wore purple. It was. But those highlights. <laughs> he looks like my mother. This is important. <laughs> He's wearing this um, like 25 strand necklace that later we see other people also wearing so i feel like is it supposed to be ceremonial and or significant i'm not sure well, but he's always or wearing somebody it. or somebody costuming not have good control over who was wearing he's just he's wearing <laughs> all of the accessories the like that coco chanel thing about like you know look at what you're wearing take off one accessory he's like put on 12 more like he is <laughs> he is the claire's employee mandatorily have to wear 17 pieces of jewelry and you know what i i always knew when it was him in a scene all of these choices paying off he no Never one else looks like this in this movie you knew which james it was that's for sure so <laughs> She's like, so he gives her a sword and he kneels. And then she's like, kiss my hand. And he's like, okay. Um, <laughs> Bothwell is in the background just being like, mm, I'm Bothwell. And um, so Mary hugs her brother and she says, my brother. And that was just so that everyone knows that's who this is. Um, so here, controversially, they both have Scottish. So mad. <laughs> their relationship. It's going to all reach a peak where I'm going to hand off to Allison, but that's in a while. But <laughs> the reconciliation is a highlight of the film. It's a time. Mm. Okay. So they both have Scottish accents. Now, some of the stuff I read about this, this might have been the IMDb trivia. People were saying like, they had Scottish accents. She wouldn't have had a Scottish accent. And I too used, I used to think this. But in fact, no, like the people in England who talked about her, like her first language was Scots, like Scots and French. Like she didn't know English until she went to England, like she spoke Scots. So they were like, she has a Scots accent <laughs> because as an adult, she learned English. So it's like, you know what? The accent actually correct. Um, people who are mad about that need to do 20 more hours and of research. Scots and French isn't that far off. Like it, it, they're not like identical, but their vowels are very mushy. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so I think I like, I, I, it, it makes sense that she spoke Scots like a Scots and French like a French and then English like 
she was stuck there. Or she wanted. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like she was so trapped. They're, they're, they're doing a Scottish accent here, which um, Samantha Morton also, she plays Mary Queen of Scots briefly in Elizabeth the Golden Age. She also does a Scottish accent. And first of all, I think it would be confusing to the average viewer to watch a thing about Mary Queen of Scots and be like, why is she French? But in fact, she would have spoken English with a Scottish accent. Saoirse mm-hmm. Ronan knows what she's doing. Anyway, I just wrote again here, like, he has he has a beard. <laughs> this guy is just hair. Um, so some gals come to show her to her room. I wrote, he is wearing 17 necklaces. Bothwell is lurking around, lurkily. Um, Hollywood icon Jimmy Stewart is like, get lost, grosso. Um, Bothwell is like, I'm here for duty, not ambition. And like, and I'm like, this is the one time in this film I'm on the side of Hollywood icon Jimmy Stewart. I'm like, get out of here, you <laughs> nasty ass. Yeah. <laughs> Come back when you put some eyeliner on. Like a <laughs> scarf. Back later, you can't sit with us. <laughs> Mary Seaton can give you some real nice chunky highlights. Like she's here now. Um Okay, so they're there. Meanwhile, in England, so all that it says is the English court. So Margot Robbie. This is our first real look at her. She has a uh, Margot Robbie has a fake nose, is what I wrote. Why? <laughs> it's such a bad nose it's like if you want to make Margot Robbie look like um, Elizabeth the first which first of all like is my face also you want to have a long face you want to have a chin like it's not just nose like to give her just the nose is <laughs> it's wild Margot Robbie has a fake nose um, she is being spoken to and at first I wasn't sure who this is but it turns out it's Randy it's Randy Randolph <laughs> The horny English ambassador. <laughs> a late, a late um, favorite of mine in this whole saga. It's Randy Randolph. I wasn't sure who he was at first. I had to look up. To, anyway, I, this is why I will mention that this movie is um, in some of he the like Randy. In some <laughs> of the third tier roles, there is colorblind casting. There is not colorblind casting in the main roles or the supporting cast, but in the third tier, there are some non-white people, specifically the guy playing Randy, and then Gemma Chan is there playing Bess of Hardwick. Allegedly. Which could not love more. God, yes. Perfection! Like, um, um, she's all of the English actresses in the world that can play Bess of Hardwick properly is Gemma Chan. Yeah. Gemma Chan has like two and a half minutes of screen time in this movie, and every time she came on, I was like, Bess of Hardwick! <laughs> She's the best. I love her. She's I, just standing in the background being like, these bitches I'm just the windows. I love her. I'm really glad, glad Crazy Rich Asians allowed her to properly pay Bess of Hardwick because this film yeah. did not. Fair. Yeah. Gemma Chan, like Gemma Chan as Bess of Hardwick, that's a movie that I would watch. I would watch. And- oh, I'd watch the crap out of that. <laughs> Gemma Chan just like flipping castles, building homes, writing letters to her husband. Her husbands are all like, we love you and adore you. It's like, of course you do. She's Gemma Chan, such best of hard work. And she's just like, get me some more lumber. It would be great. It'd if you great. loved me, you'd give me lumber. There's a scene toward the end of this where Best of Hardwick has to step into a laundry shack. And I was just like, Best of Hardwick would never. Like Mary, Mary, whatever. Best, no. Yeah, that was my actual problem. I was was like, there are no footmen, there are no large glass window pieces. (laughs) She would have at least like cleaned it up first. To have sent someone the nicest. Can you build a stable next door for my the nicest? laundry shack you've ever seen in your life and it was kind of a cool one but it was not best of hardwick cool no i'm glad she was there because that was one extra scene for Gemma chan to be in this movie but it was preposterous we'll get to it we'll get to it but at the end elizabeth is like we need to find somewhere to keep her and you see Gemma chan just being like please not my house please not my house but it's not any of my 35 houses <laughs> Okay, but like there's so much wild casting in this that was really enjoyable to me watching in 2023. So Gemma Chan is there playing Best of Hardwick. Cecil is there played by Guy Pierce with a wig that is like bouffant, like a wig, which actually in that whole like this wig has her hair is big, it has secrets. Like his wig is his like. His wig is full of secrets. It's such wig. It's such a wiggy wig. It's like 
it's a pompadour. It's like oh. such a wig. <laughs> He's got three secret codes and a knife and it, in his wig right there. And you can tell. And it perfectly blended into his beard. Like you couldn't see where the wigs, the, the hair started and, and the beard stopped. It was so weird. Mark Pilcher is just like making choices and he's making everybody look different from everybody else. And thank you, Mark Pilcher. Pilcher. Rest in peace. I don't. Ah. Choices. I think he was stuck with what he was given and he just made. You think? That's what Actually, I'm I don't know. Or do you think? Because I've like... seen Bridgerton. <laughs> well, I wonder if this was the prosthetic nose person doing the wigs. Um. Like, I don't know if wigs, I don't know whose purview wigs is under, if that's hair or makeup, because it's hair on the face, or wigs are. Anyway, he looks ridiculous. His wig is like, it's like curly, it's like Betty Draper in Mad Men. It's like, whoop, it's like a little yeah. flippity up at the bottom, and his mustache is like, he's all just like curly cues, which is not how I, I picture just the, the grandpa from Jurassic Park, because that's who played Cecil in the Kate Blanchett movie, and that just really imprinted on me. So, Taylor Swift's ex-boyfriend, Joe Alwyn, <laughs> is playing Bobby I, Duds. Amazing casting. Alice, this, this film was on the correct side of history. In, in the Discord, I said, I know this has nothing to do with the film, but can you just imagine how much better history would have been if Elizabeth had also gotten a Travis Kelsey? <laughs> and not been stuck just, as a Joe Alwyn type? Right. Right, it would have been, it would, like, everything would have been different. Actually, that reminds me that um, Hollywood icon Jimmy Stewart also kind of looks like Maddie Healy in this movie, if we're just going through Taylor's love life. But anyway, Joe <laughs> Alwyn, wow, he's just a pile yeah. of nothing. He's he, Bobby Duds. You know who plays Bobby Duds really well is um, Joseph Fiennes in Elizabeth with Kate Blanchett and he's playing Bobby Duds with a Shakespeare pantaloons. You know what? This movie had no pantaloons. pantaloons. Everyone's just wearing let everyone's wearing leather pants all the time. What is this? Rain? Come on. <laughs> so anyway, so really he sad. uh so um so Margot is like okay so Margot Robbie so she has fake nose she's got bleached eyebrows um and she is yeah she's kind of doing the whole like um Charlize Theron and monster like I'm a beautiful actress but I'm putting on ugly makeup to win an academy award which yes. she did not get nominated for nor win for this performance <laughs> in this film um anyway so she's just like I'm cool with Mary she's we're like sisters it's fine I'm sure that won't change in any significant way in the next couple hours and william cecil is like what um i just wrote here like allison take the wheel talk about his wig but we've talked about the wig i think we've been covered <laughs> I think, I think it's, this was a group effort <laughs> okay so back in scotland and here we have the introduction of david rizzio played by israel cruz cordova the most attractive person in this movie i would say he was He's very he's handsome. Excellent tour they did his character so dirty, but he's a very handsome. He is so handsome. He's like preternaturally handsome. He is, yeah. He did the best he, he could with what he out had. Of the like he'd been living in a hollow tree for 20 years, and he's just like, hello, I am here now. I will be your secretary. <laughs> I think Rizzio would have approved of the casting. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah, he has kind of like a good sort of like sleeping on a sideways cabinet energy, this guy. Yes, that's correct. Anyway, so he's singing for the Marys. And he is, as we will see throughout this film, he is constantly singing. It is kind of, he's he is their like Spotify service. He is on he call. Has, he has two roles in this film. His roles are sing and be gay. Those yep. are his two characteristics. Yep. That's yeah. So the dog is there. He's singing. And then Mary is like, hey, are you, do you want to be my secretary? Can you take dictation? And he's like, okay. So then. Naturally, you hear someone with a nice singing voice. And you're like, you know what job is perfect for you? Secretary. Yep. <laughs> and um, I know how to read. And thus you... did he become. <laughs> <laughs> so he became the secretary. Um, and again, like we are just. 
you know, it's a short movie. This is a complicated story. Rizzio, no one has ever paid him as much attention as I did in my podcast. <laughs> I don't think. But, you know, he he's deserved coming it. With, he's coming here with political knowledge. He's sleeping in cabinets. He speaks all these languages. Anyway. He's like the Secretary of State. He's not just the boy with the flute. Nonsense. Justice for Davy Rizzio, dual tortoise of our heart. I just want to say that the the chat is like saying Allison 100% about Rizzio. Like, my goals in life, sing and be gay. <laughs> I mean, I respect <laughs> that. <laughs> and they also, Alyssa mentions, his hair would remain flawless even with a trunk fur bed. Yeah, his wig is a good wig. Um, Rizzio's it's wig. So good. Um, yeah, although, yeah, and Iris just reminded me that she did, she, she didn't say, do you want to be my secretary? She says, how is your hand? Is how she phrases that. It, it, but he knew what no, she meant, and that's how you know they're soulmates. No, it's okay. Maybe it's because I was partially raised by my grandmother, who was raised by her father, who was Scots. But like, how's your hand? How well are? You, how good are you at writing? Yeah. Like, yeah. how's your hand? How good are you at writing? Like, that was obvious. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I just, I'm just imagining him being like, it's pretty good, I guess. <laughs> Do you want to see what Damn. I can do with this? <laughs> I drum on my loot. Good Just question. You know like the, the question. Gift from Road to El Dorado where he's like real intent on the mandolin? That's what this <laughs> movie writes here. <laughs> so she writes a letter to everything's great. She writes a letter to Elizabeth and she's like, let's be friends. You seem cool. Okay, and then from this scene and for the rest of the film, Hollywood Ike and Jimmy Stewart has added a headband to his look. Um, and the headband really. is his headband. It's sort of like a piece of string. It's like on rain, but the sometimes the ladies in waiting would wear these like head necklaces, and so it's kind of a head necklace. Um. Anyway, so he now has a headband. He just does. This is what's up. Um, one more accessory. It would be great if he had one more accessory each scene, but. <laughs> He practically does. Because this is, I think I still hadn't noticed the three fanny packs. By the last scene, he's got fanny packs going up his arm. Absolutely. Okay, so he's wearing a headband. And Mary is getting her portrait painted. And she also, for most of this movie, is wearing like one ear cuff on one ear and one dangly earring on the other ear. It looks great. It made me want to get like supplementary ear piercings. I was like, rock it. It did look cool. It did look cool. It has nothing to do with anything, but who am I to judge? Um... This is a look that she has for this whole film. We're three judgy bitches on a podcast. That's who we are to judge. <laughs> I don't want to come on this podcast live stream and be like, historically, women didn't wear ear cuffs because you know what? They probably did. I don't know. Um, anyway, so she's having this miniature painted that the miniature is sent to Margot Robbie, Queen Elizabeth. And Margot Robbie, Queen Elizabeth, in a real sort of like... Um, evil queen in snow white she's looking at herself in a mirror and then at mary and she's like who's prettier who's prettier (laughs) Um, the answer is mary because she's not wearing a horrible prosthetic nose (laughs) yeah the vibe here anyway oh i just wrote here that Gemma chan is here and her her wig is good okay can we talk about the it was just it was such a weird choice to have elizabeth so obsessed with everybody's looks before she got smallpox and when she's right there is the point to like ooh, a character turn like no 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 she's not going to change at all yeah it's like even when she was young when she was young and before smallpox elizabeth was just like i'm hot that's what's going on and then later she'd be like she was you know had everyone pretend like she was still really hot but this is her hot era so it's yeah No, she had she was very like CC in that way. Like she knew she she was hot. She knew she was something. I don't think I'm hot anymore, but I'm gonna pretend like I am. (laughs) Yeah. So this movie, this is where I think, as we discussed earlier, was written by a man. Um, and so it's kind of like, what how can we contrast these two women? What if one of them is like hot and also confident and smart? And what if the other one is not hot, not confident, and dumb is what he's doing with these. Instead of being like, what if they challenged each other or whatever? It's like, what if Elizabeth was just trash who hated herself? And that's what we get. 
We do. What I if mean, we, Elizabeth you sh- spent all of her time staring in the mirror going like, what if I was pretty and what if I had lots of babies? Then I would be happy. Usually we get Elizabeth is a strong, competent one and Mary's the hot one. And they gave just everything to Mary this time, which was like, it's a weird choice that Mary yeah. had zero, zero drawbacks and had all the drawbacks. Even the story doesn't make it better. It doesn't make them more people. It just, it's just a weird choice. No. It's just weird. It's a really weird choice. I was thinking about the same thing too, because in like there was the previous movie, like the ones where they were all like, Mary, she's just like this romantic person and she runs off with Bothwell and whatever. And Elizabeth is all like cold and distant. But here they're like, well, let's, Mary was actually smart and capable, which she was. But they're like, but if we make Mary smart and capable, how can we contrast her to Elizabeth? It's like, I know, arts and crafts. Don't. Um, don't. Because we don't, can't have don't two women in them. the same movie. No, we're both smart. That would blow everyone's mind. Can't yeah, that? no, that mm-hmm. would that would <sighs> choices were made. Um, okay, the next scene. I don't think it's Hardwick Hall, but I was like, is that Hardwick Hall? That looks like Hardwick Hall. I don't. I know, I know it's not. I know it wasn't built yet, and there's not the es in the top. But I'm like, mm, looks like Hardwick Hall. I just want it to be. It's some like beautiful house or whatever. Anyway, inside, Bobby Duds is talking to Cecil. And he's like, Elizabeth won't accept my hand in marriage. And Cecil is like, blah, blah. Bobby Duds, please convince her to marry you and have a baby or else Mary is going to take over England or something. And I'm like, Bobby Duds is married. (laughs) (laughs) So is Bothwell twice. (laughs) Movie is not That stops no one. The only one it was concerned with was Mary. It's not even like then. So then he throws his wife down the stairs. No, anyway. So Bobby Duds is like okay, because Joe Alwyn is bringing nothing to this role. He's just like mm, I guess he's. It's not even like I'm a man. he's not even like a himbo. He's just kind of like mm, I'm there. Like he, anyway, his character voted present at this movie. Sure did show up to film. Yeah, I'm not sure. Anyway, and he was the darn lead of the engine. That's all he was. Uh, sorry, that came from my soul. <laughs> yep. <laughs> yep. Okay, so what I wrote here is 7,500 identical men stand in the hallway <laughs> waiting to chat with Margot Robbie. Fully correct. They're all wearing, this whole movie is just like um, gray and black. Like the Because whole they're mo- Protestants, and <laughs> Everyone is just gray and black. There's a real dearth of color. But you're right. I think that's it. That's why. But even the Scottish are, oh, even Mary is like very gray and black. Mary wears blue but, sometimes. Oh my god! That's how you know she's Catholic. Because she's oh, the Virgin Mary in a denim dress. The movie is just there's not color in this movie. Um, the actually my next statement. So in my notes, Scotland, and I wrote it's all very non-colorful. Because <laughs> this is the party where they're at the party, just Mary, everyone just sitting on the stone floor of a castle, just sitting. Everyone's wearing gray. Everything is gray. <laughs> it's just gray. Um, so they're not even contrasting. Mary Fleming like, would never. Catholic and Protestant is just like gray. Here's our party. Sit on the floor. <laughs> <laughs> um, Hollywood icon Jimmy Stewart and Mary, he's just being like, okay, here's this is who this is. And he's like, over there, it's William Maitland of Lethington. And I was like, William Maitland of Lethington? I know who that is. And I had to double check, but that's Scottish Machiavelli. I'm like, <laughs> Scottish Machiavelli, I know that character. So he's in the movie, aka the future Mr. Mary Fleming is now on the scene. I wrote, he looks just like some guy. He's just. <laughs> He's just some guy. He kind of looks like Cecil, but he's. I'm just like, okay, he's there. Uh, Rizzio is playing the violin um, because that is what he does. He plays music and is gay. And then the movie steps up a notch because under stage right, David Tennant as John Knox. So his costume is kind of like if you take Chewbacca from Star Wars and scrape off just the eyeballs area and put him in a robe is what David Tennant looks like. 
He's yes. a pile of hair. He and is. what I love most about this is that David Tennant's father in real life is like the head of the Church of Scotland. <laughs> so he's just like, yeah, I know how to play a weirdo Scottish priest. Move over. <laughs> I have childhood trauma to work on right here. <laughs> well, I'm sure his father's a lovely person. <laughs> and today and the Church of Knox are two fundamentally different things. Like, fundamentally yeah, I don't think things. David Tennant's dad is wandering around going, horse! He's horse. Now, it's not towards the end of the movie where he actually does say whores, but he says every other word. He's like, strumpet! <laughs> harlot! It's great. He He's is having like... the time of his life, and he is a brilliant actor, and my favorite part of the first half of this movie is he he makes this movie suddenly fun so i'm like i'm having a great time <laughs> so he's got the like 12 pounds of beard like 25 pounds of long hair cloak hat the pointing finger of disapprovement he's just like this is it he is the ghost from your merch that's what he's doing. he shows up um <laughs> anyway Oh, and at this point, yeah, Hollywood icon Jimmy Stewart is wearing a new outfit. I wrote, he's wearing sort of a King Arthur if he was in 1967 cosplay with headband. So he's kind of like if you're doing a production of Camelot the musical in 1972 starring goth people. Anyway, so they're having, I guess this party was like a pre-asshole council meeting, sit on floor party. Anyway, so then they, he stomps into this room and he's like, okay, let's have our meeting. So um, Mary enters in her full Anne of Denmark drag with her Anne of Denmark wig with jewels in it. Um, the Mary's all curtsy. Um, and th this movie does a lot of cutting back and forth. And I would say kind of randomly very like scenes just happen and then stop where I'm like, what was the point of that? Anyway. No, no, so no, Margo. Marco is there with Taylor Swift's ex, Joe Alwyn. They walk down some hallway. Um, he is in, she's in gray. He is in black because this movie is effectively a black and white movie. I wrote, this movie is allergic to color. Great wigs, though, is what I wrote. Um, they pass by the 75,000 identical men, all in black, still there, apparently. One guy doesn't, everyone stands up except for one guy the guy who does not stand up is mr bates from downton abbey i was like mr bates from downton abbey what are you doing here? where is your cane and your limp i got that in a war that hasn't happened yet unfortunately <laughs> so it's mr bates from downton abbey with a beard um because this movie has a rule where all the men have to have beards joe alwyn tried it's just a neck beard on him. Um, you couldn't even paste anything on him, right? No. Taylor Swift was like, no, I won't let you. Um, so anyway, he is Lord Lennox, a.k.a. Darnley's dad. Darnley is there as well. He is this blonde guy with a reddish beard, played by Saoirse Ronan's real-life boyfriend, who is a Scottish person. Um, and he won some sort of award for like best performance by a Scottish person in a movie for this movie. So I will say I liked that part about Darnley is when I saw him in this scene at the end of the hallway, I was like, Ooh, look at that man. I bet you he's interesting. I wonder who that could be, which is the correct response. You should have to a first impression of Darnley. Yeah. Look at that handsome individual the, over there with, with his vibes. Tell me about that. His vibe is like preppy then you, frat then you boy. talk to him. <laughs> Right, yes, right. Preppy. and then you're like, oh no, 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 no. Yeah. <laughs> Get me out of this conversation <laughs> right now. <laughs> so, yeah, at first I was like, I don't know how I feel about this Darnley, but I feel like I feel like he he did the job. He's coming in like compared to Joe Alwyn. He, a personality. He's performing. He's performing a performance with charisma. So. Mm -hmm. Anyway, so William Cecil yells at Mr. Bates. Then Mr. Bates slaps Darnley. I wrote, good. Um, <laughs> so we just see Darnley is a shady person and his dad is also shady. Um, okay, Scotland. So Mary is wearing a bedazzled denim bolero jacket and matching gown. Which is what she wears for most of this movie is a bolero denim jacket 
and matte string gown. The, I would wear the jacket like on a day to day. It's a great jacket. It's a it's it's a it's a look. <laughs> it's a look <laughs> it that a she is wearing. Um yeah, I forget. I read that the costumer said like she wanted to do denim because it showed that she was like working hard or something. I I forget. You know what? Fine. It's also in this movie looks gray. So anyway, so she's addressing the asshole the council. Color. Everything in this movie is the same color. So um oh, this is I was just so I was really excited. Um I was I wrote, I'm dying. They don't say everyone's names, but these are all James, the asshole lords, all in a room. I was just like, oh my god, it's the asshole lords. I know them. I know them from the story. It's Mary with the asshole lords. <laughs> I was just really thrilled. That's James, and that's James. They like to sign paperwork together. <laughs> it's the guys. Um. Anyway, so she's just like blah blah. I'm the queen, and David Tennant is just like Mer. like all you see is his little eyeballs amid all the hair, and he's just like Mer. I'm so mad. Poor, poor. Being mad. Through seventy pounds of hair, so impressive. Yeah, you see him. His thought bubble is just poor. Um. So anyway, Mary's just like, listen up, bitches. Or what's the thing? It's like, listen up, sevens. Ten is talking. Um, I don't want Mary just anyone. So um, Bothwell I mean, She was in is full the geese at that moment. She was. Yes. She was. Definitely, definitely. Bothwell <laughs> is also <laughs> lurking. Like, Bothwell in this movie, 100% of the time, is always just standing behind somewhere being like, mm, Bothwell. He's just kind of <laughs> always there. <laughs> Like he's a Pokemon, and all he can say is his own name. He's just like Bothwell. Well, well he was, said, "I think I was honestly, in I was honestly upset that he was in every scene, every single freaking scene with her, because I was always mad, always. I had no other emotion, just mad yeah. that Bothwell oh. was there, and I knew it was coming, and it was coming, and it was coming." <laughs> The funny thing about the guy who plays Bothwell, and I don't have it in front of me right now, is he's showed up in a couple of things I've watched. Um, I'm just watching it. I don't know what I'm an old episode of Miss Marple or something. And I'm like, let's see who these actors are. And I'm like, he was American with Scots. I'm like, he played Bothell. I'm like, but this person in this film I'm watching has no beard. Could that be him? <laughs> and he, he showed up in like two to three things. And I'm like, Bothwell, but Bothwell had a beard. <laughs> so he can look very different. You would believe that to a person. <laughs> so he's just kind of there, just sort of emanating this like incel energy. Um, anyway. So Mary's like, I'm not going to marry anybody. And also Catholics and Protestants are all cool. Let's just be friends. John Knox, what do you think about that? <laughs> Old boy. And he's just like, I hate women. Ah! Literally, I think that's, that's the, yeah. I believe he says all women are terrible, is yeah. what he says. Like, okay, man. <sighs> so nice. Yeah, she could have gone full de geese on him at any minute, and she's like, "No, I'm gonna let y'all be Protestant. It's it's gonna be cool. We're all gonna get along." And he's like, "No, never." <laughs> As I recall, though, the first time they met each other, he did make her cry. So <laughs> historically adjacent. Um, Makes sense. so anyway. his way. <laughs> Yeah, he is one note, and that note is like whores. <laughs> um, so anyway, Sersha is like, Okay, well, fuck you, goodbye forever. And he's like, I never needed you anyway. And she like kicks him off his council, off the council, or whatever. And then Hollywood Echo and Jimmy Stewart, there's a scene with him and, and Mary, and he's like, Reconsider, don't kick him off from your council. And she's like, Am I taking crazy pills? Like, what? <laughs> Why would you advise me that? That's bad advice. He sucks. And then Hollywood Icon Jimmy Stewart says, quote, show him love. Bitch. No. <laughs> Which is like the least, the least James Stewart thing you could ever possibly say. And the worst advice for getting along with John Knox. Yeah, guess what's Great. not going to help a man who thinks you're a whore. <laughs> He's like, those women over there are breathing whores. Like, come on. 
anyway, she's like, Are we in the same Go fuck yourself. No. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So then we're off in the Heelins. Um, men on horses. Okay. Randy. It's Randy Randolph is like coming down, <laughs> as you might recall. Randy Randolph, aka Barnaby, aka Pamphlimus, England's worst spy. <laughs> is has been sent by Margot Robbie from England to Scotland to bring his messy that- bitchiness, basically. <laughs> Sorry, is that did I say something incorrect? No, you- say like worse. That was just an <laughs> emotional sign. Like- <laughs> He's one of the. But- Sorry, among- the competition is pretty steep. He's one of the worst spies, I would say. Um. Yeah, so this was the scene in which I like Googled to be like, who is this character? And I was like, oh my God, it's Randy. And I was like, I love Randy. Um, anyway, exactly. So Randy. So then I was like excited that Randy is coming to Scotland. What's going to happen? So party now. Allison, I'm going to defer to you. Could you ex- describe the party that they're partying. This is the one with the paper mache masks and the barking. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> um, this is choices are made so loudly in here, and I couldn't decide if it was supposed to be like a court mask thing or like a sex thing. <laughs> I'm still not sure. But right, also, I thought it was just me. <laughs> no, I'm like okay. I feel like I've seen that in the window of a sex shop before, and I don't know why, <laughs> but. Um, I think the men are all dressed like ancient Greek people in like bed sheet togas. And I think the women are all wearing like paper mache puppy masks and they're like barking around on the floor. And somehow there are trees inside. Like it's a middle school play and someone has really gone hog wild with the paper mache. And this is just happening in the background and it is never discussed and it is never explained. But if you recall, the last party was just sitting on the floor. So this was like a real step. (laughs) And knowing that Rizzio was the party planner, he was like, bitches, we cannot have another party where we're all sitting around on the floor. I'm going to go get some glue and we're going to start building a set. (laughs) And he's there. Rizzio is there playing the violin. (laughs) Live entertainment. Not dressed as a puppy, which is good. No. Um, Hollywood icon Jimmy Stewart has his party headband on. I just wrote trees indoors. <laughs> um, anyway, Bothwell is just there being like, mm, I'm Bothwell. <laughs> I hate fun. Just staring. Iris in the Making chat. And I do want to point out the women are wearing pants. So it is a pants party. That is true. Pants party. <laughs> I, was, I didn't notice the pants because I was distracted by the dog masks. But I, I did right. notice the pants. <laughs> well, this is like... I noticed. Of all of the reading and podcasting I've done that we've communally experienced, like we've talked a lot about the parties and none of these details came up. Dog you masks like inside the ambassadors trees. would have written that shit down because right? people were there. Didn't even mention ambassadors would have been like, saw a dog mask today. Well, this is like John Knox <laughs> would all the women like, this wearing pants, like, and there was a dog mask <laughs> for like he would scream about this for months. Had he seen, he would never stop, he would have an immediate heart attack. Yeah, this at this like, sex dog party, like a whore. <laughs> <laughs> now this is the part where the clo- I watched it with closed captioning and it, this is the point where it says people and dogs barking <laughs> I saw that too like how is the that whole, not a meme <laughs> the whole thing is just like almost like a Caligula orgy but not but yeah. trees <laughs> With none and... of the fun parts. <laughs> yeah, so Saoirse Ronan, Queen Mary, is there. She's wearing a ruff that's, like, pink. Anyway, Randy Randolph is there. He's just like, hell yeah. Um, so, um, anyway, he's like, I came here to actually, no, he's there to be like, I came here with so, to be a political emissary, and I like to talk to you about business matters, and around them, there's just, like, humans barking. Um 
And he's like, so Elizabeth wants you to marry an Englishman. Um, oh, and then I got distracted with Saoirse Ronan's wig here. It's like, she's got her wig that's like sticking straight up as per usual, like Marge Simpson hair. And then, but there's like a doily cutting through the middle of it. Like, like someone like took a guillotine and put a doily in the middle of her wig. So it's, anyway, she's got her party. But she's like got her party outfit on. Um, the then I say the dog men and the sexy goddesses take it all up a notch. I didn't realize it was dog women. Um, oh yeah, but this is where I realized one of the dog people is um, Mary Beaton because she smiles flirtatiously at Randy. Because if you'll recall, that was Randy Randolph really had a thing for Mary Beaton. Um, she's the bookish one. To recap, anyway, so then. Mary Queen of Scots points out like, oh, Scottish Machiavelli likes this other Mary, which is Mary Fleming. Um, and this is where I wrote, the thing about Scottish Machiavelli is he's wearing the same wig as Cecil. <laughs> so they look, <laughs> to me, identical. But one is always in England and one is always in Scotland. So it was never an issue. And I do want to commend this film for making everyone look real different. Except for these two. But they were never together, so it's fine. Anyway, so this was a scene where I was just like, you know what? They got some information from John Guy's book, which is that Randa, Randy liked Mary Beaton and Scottish Machiavelli likes Mary Fleming. Those are facts. So <laughs> anyway, then we cut to John Knox. David Tennant is giving a live podcast recording of his incel show. He's just like, women are awful, especially Catholic women who are queens and their name is Mary. Um, she has parties and I hate her. Blah. And everyone's just like, almost, I don't think this is this scene in the later scene where he's also doing one of his live podcast recordings. Everyone starts doing almost like the, we will rock you from the opening of a night's tale. Like they're all just like, whores, 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 whores. Like the crowd is really into him. Um, Anyway, so then we cut to Mary with the Marys. And here's what I'll say about this movie as well, is that they really show Mary and the Marys together always in a really genuine way that I feel is like, that's nice. Like, they were always together and friends. Besties. <laughs> yes, I don't think any of, I think half of the Marys don't get any lines, but they were always there. I never so. knew which of them was which, but... um they're anyway Mary and the Marys are helping her get ready for bed and they're all this is a very rain coated scene they're all like what's it like to kiss a man or whatever <laughs> actually they're talking about like who's gotten to which base with the various 45 year old English men who are horny for them <laughs> which seem to be the only men in all of Scotland um so they take down Mary's wig hair and they're like what's it like to fuck a man um, and she's like, I was married to a child, so I can't tell you. So sorry. A sickly child. <laughs> My husband married died to a sickly of child. As a child. <laughs> <laughs> so none of us can really share yeah, any once information. Once, maybe. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. He um, held my hand one time and he was terrified. I think I got pregnant. <laughs> <laughs> meanwhile over in england things are heating up between the void of chemistry that is joe alwyn and margot robbie he's like kissing her neck half-heartedly and she's like you know i can't have sex with you and he's like yeah i know and it's like oh wow oh this tortured tortured lovers yeah what a star-crossed scenario don't um, kill your wife dude <laughs> Do it. This guy Stay would. Away from the this guy would never kill his wife. He's not interesting enough <laughs> to do that. Um. So in Scotland, Mary is she's she's talking to the Marys, and she's like, oh, I want to marry again and like like get fucked real good. I want to like learn what it's like to like actually be fucked. Oh, and then she has her period, and then they like wash her. And this is the director said that the like producers or whatever tried to like take out this scene of like her having her period, you kind of menstruation in a movie. And she's like, no, like this is important to the movie because like menstruation was first of all, lots of people. There's an elaborate <laughs> metaphor we're gonna set up in about an hour that she has to be menstruating for. Yeah. 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 So anyway, they just like rinse her off or whatever. 
England. So Randy back in England. He's like, so Mary doesn't want to take your advice on who to marry. Um, he says you should marry Mary to someone loyal to you. Um, and she's like, what about Joe Alwyn, a.k.a. Bobby Dutz? Does she suggest that or does someone else suggest that? I forget. Maybe he, maybe he suggests Bobby does. He's anyway. She brings it up to him. Is suggested. Yeah, and then she and Bobby does are just lying next to each other, fully clothed in bed, just being like, "Wow, a love story for the ages." Um, I wrote, "Is his wife dead by now or what?" I forget. Anyway, she's Who's like, she's like, maybe you should marry Mary Queen of Scots, and he's like, no, like <laughs> beige. He's just beige. Um. Anyway, Gemma Chan is nearby, just like this bitch. Like, anyway, she's like how Bothwell is always there just being like, mm, my Bothwell. Gemma Chan is just there being like, I'd rather be building homes and ordering lumber and getting mm -hmm. a good deal on tapestries instead of looking at your foolishness, Margot Robbie. I don't want to be in the room while you guys are making out. Like, can I do anything else? Can I go to Marshall's? I hear there's a great sale on decor. <laughs> That's you part hit of Home Depot Marshall's. later. What am I saying? That's me. <laughs> okay, so now we see Bobby Dads hops on a horse. Um, Elizabeth looks out a window. Bells chime, and then she runs outside to like kiss his hand as he heads off to Scotland, I guess, to like propose to Mary or whatever. Right, a thing queens famously did, which is run around without any attendance and just go out into the snow barefoot after their boyfriends because they had nothing else to be doing. Yeah, especially queens who like sad ladies who wanted to find love but couldn't. Yeah, yeah. Um, so well, she wasn't Elizabeth ruling a country or anything. She no. in this movie, she is not just ruling like, a country. <laughs> she's just kind of she's not, floating around in her nightgown. She does not have a thought in that head. Mm -mm. She has one thought, and that thought is baby. Baby, hmm. pretty, pretty. pretty baby? She writes a letter to Mary that's like, girl, let's meet up and like be friends. So Bobby Duds, or this is a great bit of staging. So he arrives with a giant portrait of Elizabeth's face. And so one of the- I did love that. That made me laugh out loud. Because one of them- I was like, there's a small, tasteful picture of me. And Elizabeth is like, bitch, would you like a seven foot tall painting? Because she would have. Yeah. But then one of the <laughs> attendants is just holding up the painting in front of her. Like it's her giant face. It's just, and they're just standing there this whole time, this person holding this painting. And Bobby does is like, I'm trying to pretend that my giant girlfriend isn't standing right next to me watching me through this whole conversation. Oh, yeah. So Rizzio unboxes the, the painting. <laughs> anyway, so Mary is sitting in a chair and she's got this like fur. It's like really boss ass bitch vibes. Like it's, I love this look. Saoirse Ronan, this is one of the like mean when you look up just images of this movie, it's her sitting there just like, mm, hello. And she has this fur across her lap and she looks very queenly. And Bobby Dud stands before her. Um, <laughs> and Randy Randolph is there like, nah, want to marry this guy? No, nah, <laughs> here we go. <laughs> He's real boring. Thing. Might kill you. <laughs> and it's not even like, want to do a thruple? Because that would be interesting. Right. Um, <laughs> Mary, Queen of Scots, is like, uh, no, I'm not going to marry my cousin's boyfriend, who is not a royal and is also Taylor Swift's ex-boyfriend. So she's like, if Elizabeth names me her heir, that is what I would like. And Randy is like, that's not what I came here to talk about. And Mary is like, goodbye. Um, but plans are still on for Mary and Elizabeth to meet up next month and have a little kiki. The border, it says on the screen so people are um traveling along there's like a carriage of like the marys are in it mary's on a horse she has like a little hat on with a feather Rizzio is play sitting there in the carriage playing the fiddle like the guy in mad max fury road who plays music while the trucks are like driving on each other he's just like never not playing his lute um bothwell is there and he calls out everybody to halt and I like this, they halt, and then all the Marys all lean up the same side of the carriage, like, what's going on? Like in Scooby-Doo. <laughs> and the dog is there, too. And they all... It's a real Scooby-Doo Charles. Yeah. Okay, so 
who it is is it's randy and he's like oh sorry uh liz can't meet you because there's like envoy drama and mary's like okay well why don't you just come hang out with us tonight at hollyrood randy i bet the marys are gonna be there mm. so uh let's see hollywood icon jimmy stewart remember him he's in the movie still um and scottish machiavelli are like don't trust her she's punishing you for refusing to marry bobby duds Rizzio just continues playing the violin as I guess the carriage got stuck in the mud and some guys just like push the carriage through the mud. He's just like never not. Two things. Two things this man does. He's not helping push the carriage. He's just playing. No, that was that would be a third thing. Yeah, that's true. That's true. That's true. That's true. <laughs> okay. So violins. It's another party. So Randy and Mary Beaton are hooking up in a stairwell, which is also a very rain sort of scene to have happen. Anyway, they're just like making out and she's like, no, I can't have sex with you. But if you could tell me state secrets, that'd be great. And he's like, I shall do that for I am Randy. <laughs> so and then she's like, that's exactly what happened. That's what happened. Yeah. As I recall. <laughs> anyway, so then she's like, OK, got to go tell these state secrets to Mary. Bye. And then so she does. So it turns. So this is like a really sort of flying squadron type thing of using the Marys just to get sexy secrets from guys, which yeah. learned it from the best. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway, so she reports to Mary. Elizabeth canceled not because of envoy issues, but because she has smallpox. Bum, bum, bum. Bum, bum, bum. But more importantly, Mary is wearing pants um, in this scene. <laughs> I was like, pants! And I was excited. Anyway, she's like, go rouse my brother. Dress me. Because she's like, Elizabeth is dying. This is great. I'm going to be the queen. Hell yeah. Um, so then they do this emergency letter writing via Rizzio, which was funny because Rizzio is sitting and then there's like every character in the movie was like around <laughs> just being like just watching, just watching like, him this letter. How good's your hand, Rizzio? <laughs> <laughs> and so what she says is I'll marry Bobby Duds as long as Elizabeth names her the heir back in England. But guess what? Guess who still has smallpox and it's not dead. Margot Robbie. So she's wearing this veil thing and she's just like upset and jealous she's like oh my god mary wants to steal bobby duds for herself where it's like you offered him to her lady come on because <laughs> elizabeth anyway. was prone to forgetting what, she, what choices wait. she's made that was that was a thing she, she was did. very she flighty forgot. notoriously yeah notoriously so it's like mm. no not bobby anyway well here's the thing about women are in constant <laughs> And emotional, mm -hmm. which I learned from Especially Elizabeth. Like, yeah, that's yeah. been her reputation. Yeah. Notoriously. No, I learned that from John Knox's podcast. Um, <laughs> so, so Elizabeth <laughs> upset. She stomps down a hallway wearing her veil. She just stomps past some men, including Darnley, who are just like sword fighting, practicing in the hallway while drinking wine. While drinking wine. <laughs> It is a Darnley brand. I will get it back. Darnley, yeah. never not on brand. It's fair. Anyway, um, so <laughs> Bess of Hardwick is following. Gemma Chan is just like, Jesus Christ. What is happening? <laughs> Why is this my job? Like, what is happening? I am with you on this Bess of Hardwick. I don't know what's happening with her. She's like, to get Gemma Chan is standing there. <laughs> she has her hands on her hips and she's just like, what the fuck? It's, it's good. It's a good performance. How anyway. long is this going to be? I need to get to the garden center. <laughs> Closes at seven, Liz. <laughs> They're having 10% off today. Um, so Darnley is just <laughs> drinking wine. Everybody's kicked out. And then Bobby, Liz like collapses to the ground and Bobby Duds hugs her and she's just sobbing. And then he pulls back the veil and sees her like smallpox face, which is maybe or maybe not smallpox accurate, but it looks like all over her face. Shingles. And he says, I am yours, forever yours. And Margot Robbie is like, but how can I refuse what I myself suggested? Ugh. And then she cries. And it's like, what the fuck is this movie doing with Elizabeth? It's actually insane. Um, Terrible. It's unhinged behavior. Yeah. So Scotland. Okay. So this is we get into some like. Hmm. Rizzio has dressed up like one of the Marys in a dress and looks great because this actor is 
ridiculously good looking. Um, and they're all like, yes, queen, Asterix, not really queen. Um, and then he's, and it's like, oh, this is cute. This is nice. But then the movie has to be like, let's make this subtext. Text. I have to say it out loud. Look at this gay person. Look at this canonically <laughs> gay person who was gay. You may not realize. Let me make sure that I underline gay. it for those who are not paying attention. This is a gay man. <laughs> so what he said. Well, I'm just like flinging myself off the couch like. Yeah. Water, water, stop this. Yeah. So this. surprise, Rizzio's <laughs> character is gay. And also maybe trans is this movie's suggestion which it's because this writer doesn't know the difference that between gay is and trans and true stuff very much so i do want to say in defense of john guy that is not in his book no this is this is a man wrote a movie and it was just like gender sexuality gay yeah so <laughs> Riz- both. so rizzio says is it a sin i feel more like sister to you than brother and mary is like hashtag ally She's like, be your true self. You were born this way, basically. A thing extreme Catholic Mary Stewart would probably definitely have done. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. For sure. Absolutely. Like the woman who like had one of her ladies in waiting executed for thinking about an abortion once. Right, right, right. Yeah. Notorious uh, liberal ally Mary Stewart. (laughs) She's like, yes, yes, be yourself. Because her character can have no flaws. All the flaws are Elizabeth. Mary Elizabeth was homophobic, you could tell. Yeah. So anyway, they're all like, woo, let's dance all together. And then Hollywood Uck and Jimmy Stewart comes in and he's like, wait a minute. When I have long hair and eyeliner and 17 necklaces, it's like not gay though. (laughs) Not in a gay way. (laughs) It's like emo edgy. So he comes in, he's all like, it's ridiculous to have a character. The difference between what Ritzy is wearing and what Hollywood Uck and Jimmy Stewart is wearing is like the only difference is pants. Like everything, like, and Jimmy Stewart's wearing a kilt. Yeah. So, what are you even doing? <laughs> having having him come in and be like, "Oh, this is wrong." Arguably, he's wearing well, a shorter skirt than Rizzo is in this scene. So, a kilt exactly. is is a very masculine thing in Scotland. Oh, it is. But I'm, I'm just aware. saying. Yeah. But if the but for him to come in with his eyeliner, his hairband, and everything to be like oh, a oh, man yeah. in women's clothing, it's like, <laughs> why are you bro, like this? Look, look in the mirror. Look in the mirror. Um, so anyway, he's like, hey, so some guys are here to see you. It's Darnley and his dad, Mr. Bates from Downton Abbey. And so they're like, great, let's do a fun game. So <laughs> they all dress the same, the Marys, which actually I feel like is kind of like them. So they all sit around in a room and they're all wearing sort of like plain black dresses, a.k.a. the only dresses anyone wears in this movie. And so then uh, Darnley comes in and with his dad, Mr. Bates from Downton Abbey, and they're all like, which of us is the queen? You have to guess. And they're all like, he, 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 we're such silly women. Um, And Darnley is like, I got this. And he sort of like walks around and Mary is just like, ogling him she's like "Ooh, look at that he's a long lad like (laughs) he figures out which one is her um and mary is like oh oh my god he recognized me and like allison said when you first see him you're like oh that guy seems cool so she's like and remember she said just like two scenes ago she's like i just want to know it's like to fuck a man and she's like, and then this extremely (laughs) handsome man here's one and if all she'd done life would be much better Yep. Oh, Miguel had a great point just now in the chat. How hard was it for Darnley to identify her when she was six feet tall? Um, she was six feet tall, had red hair. Red hair. <laughs> and no one sending else did. her portrait around England to people. Yeah. <laughs> Can't guess who. Which one? She probably had her face on a fucking coin at this point. You know what this is? She looks like, like Elizabeth, kinda like... just a little. Yep. No, but it's kind of like that thing that Henry VIII did where he's all like, who's the king? You don't know. I have a mask it's on. It's a man with a giant ulcer on his leg, I think. So, <laughs> They're it's, so ridiculously little... tall. I don't know why they did that. They love playing a silly game. Okay, so now Mary has, she's had a, a delusion. A, but she's in a new era now, y'all, because she's wearing blue. She's wearing blue and not gray or black. 
So she and Darnley go strolling and she's changed her hair from the Anne of Denmark hair into the trademark Mary Queen of Scots heart-shaped hair, which, hang on. Hang on. Oop. I want to show you something to demonstrate what I mean. Allison, mm -hmm. do you have the same something? Yes, probably. Uh -huh. <laughs> I love it so much. It's Mary Queen of Scots, little ghost. Um, we were made sent these. Scotland, yes, made in Scotland. It's from a company called Timorous Ghosties. And she makes ghosts of Scottish things. And anyway, she posted these a while ago on Instagram. And I was like, is that Mary Queen Scott's ghost? And she's like, yes. And I was like, can I have it? <laughs> and she's like, yes. So, and then I was like, can you send two? <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, I love you. <laughs> Lana, <laughs> Lana, I'm sorry to exclude you from this. Um, if there had been a Marie de Guise ghost, yes. you would have gotten it. <laughs> Catherine de Medici ghost. Yes. Anyway. Wait, I'll show you my other toy I, I have here. Too. As of this Mary Queen of Scots um, peg doll. This is what I'm dealing with right now. Oh. <laughs> Gertie? Gertie's trying to eat my cup. But it's keeping her from trying to eat my computer, so... That's why it's jiggling. That's why I'm not entirely paying attention because I've got a seven month old puppy and my. No. We, Your Parker and a we, support, I can talk. <laughs> we support everything Gertie wants to do. I'm shocked that Hepburn hasn't made an appearance and I'm confident she will soon. Um, okay, right. So she changed her hair to be like giant heart shaped hair. And she's with Darnley. Where are we? Yeah. So she's wearing a blue denim dress and bolero matching coat, which is her trademark look. And then he stands very close to her. And I wrote is very seduction adjacent. And Mary is just like hot for this guy. <laughs> she's just like, yes. And which I was okay with because he's he's like, I'm Darnley and I'm a hoe. And I'm like, perfect. No, his yes, whole I deal is tuberculosis. <laughs> totally not which dying of tuberculosis. Not yeah. <laughs> So he is exactly like this is the vibe. This is Darnley shows up. He's hot. He's tall. Mary Queen of Scotch is just like, yes, thank you. You're my cousin. We share a grandmother. Let's Ooh, do this. Don't worry about it. <laughs> um, and also I, the fact that Sersha and this guy are like are still in a relationship together. And you see them in not by paparazzi, but I think I've seen them together maybe at the premieres. And they're just like, look at these two. They're like little hobbits together. Like in real life, Aww. it's just like you two are cute. So I think it was probably fun for them to practice these scenes nope. together. Um, anyway, so Mary's just like, we're going to fuck tonight. So um, the Marys, they are putting on Mary's lipstick and perfume. This is also another like rain type scene. And Darnley is smuggled up into her room. Like I like to think in the sex stairs, but I don't know if it's a Hollywood, but I like to think the sex stairs were used. Her hair is down. Um, he undoes his jacket. Rizzio is there. And he's like, do you want some live lute playing for your fuck fest or whatever? And Mary is like, yes, please. And so he stays and <laughs> yeah. plays the lute in the corner. I assume this is a chaperone kind of situation. So like nothing terrible happens. But it does just sound like. I don't think it is. If it on. was, then well, the Marys are just inside the door listening in as well. Anyway, so Ritzy was like, okay, I'll just like literally stand here and play music while you fuck. Anyway, she's doing the same thing with the one ear cuff and the one dangly earring. And then they're like making out and she's like, oh, but we can't, we can't fuck though. And he's like, well, then I shut, Allison, explain this scene, you know, take it away. Allison. And Darnley says, that's fine. Don't worry about it. And then Darnley goes down on Mary Queen of Scots and gives her an orgasm. And then she's like, Oh, yes, Darnley, you're so good at pleasuring a woman. You really know where the clit is, Darnley, a thing that has never been said ever in all of history. <laughs> because if there's a man less likely to go down on a woman than Darnley, I have not met that man. And then the kicker is Mary says, oh, do you want me to? And he says, oh, no, 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 I'm good. And he closes up his jacket and he walks away down the hallway. The least Darnley thing any Darnley has ever Darnleyed. And I just about lost my fucking shit. 
And Mary at Alfred, what point like, was Darnley ever like, no, I'm good. Don't worry about me. Your pleasure is the one that matters here. Darnley, the one who was like blackmailing her <laughs> to fuck him while she was like nine months pregnant or whatever. And it's because this film was written by a man who one had never spoken to a woman and two had never heard of bisexuality because they were just like, oh, Darnley, the gay one who hates women. He's never gone down. He's, he will not fuck a woman. He's so afraid of women because he's so gay. I'm like, he's a bisexual shitbag who wanted to fuck everything. Get it right. Ah, they tried to make him a tortured, tormented, closeted gay. My Darnley! In my good Christian suburbs! I'm so mad! <laughs> I've been holding this in for two weeks since I watched this movie. <laughs> So on the contrasting side, on the contrasting side, mm -hmm. Scott's good Catholic girl, Jesus, mm -hmm. trying to give head to the first guy she meets. What? Like, what? How does she even know what that is? Why would she even know what that is? Why would she even offer as the queen? You do things for her. She does not do things for you. Right. Is, isn't this yeah. a situation? No, I don't know specifically, but I believe where any sex that's not penetrative man, woman intercourse is like sodomy and illegal. Mm -hmm. Right. So like having any sex that's not procreative yeah. is like a sin. So Mary Queen of Scots wouldn't be like great oral sex. Yes. Do it. Love that. That's great. That's yeah. a loophole that I, Mary Queen of Scots. I'm into. This I felt like John happened. Knox in the scene. I was sitting on my couch being like, <laughs> "Horse!" I felt terrible, but I was like, "You would never." Would I mean, Darnley would, but not like that. And Mary would never. This <sighs> was well. Darnley mean, probably was had a too. million times, but <laughs> oh sure, but not with Mary. This no, is um, not everybody no. else. I'm so sorry, Allison, but Jillian in the chat just said he knows where the crown matrimonial is. <laughs> <laughs> no, delightful, thank you. Yeah. This was um so there's a review, I forget, I forget, one of the British newspapers, but or someone, someone about this movie said, and it was a great line. They were like, Well, this is the first film that suggested that a an act of cunnilingus changed the course of British history. <laughs> Which it does because Mary's like, you know who I'm gonna marry? That guy who gave me my first orgasm. Yeah. Um that uh, convinced her. Are... Okay, okay. If this Prince Albert and all that Sure. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. You change the course of British history by giving Queen Victoria head. Sure. Absolutely. <laughs> Yeah. Shut her up. If you're Albert, because <laughs> make her stop yeah. begging. <laughs> so that was, oh. <laughs> I'm going to say, the only. No, no, I think this is the only scene of sex that someone enjoys in this whole movie. So yes. enjoy it, everybody. Um, I did not. <laughs> <laughs> no one did. Darnley, no one enjoyed any Anna, sex in this movie. Darnley. <laughs> Considerate lover, now a canon. Um, okay, so back in England, Margot looks like shit with smallpox scars. Scotland, that's the whole scene. That's it's the scene. Like, look at her sad. I'm sad. taking notes, and that yeah. that's all that happened. So Scotland, Allison, or uh, CB, just uh, in the chat, just said, "Oh my god, I just realized that Darnley is just like Princess Margaret's Tony Armstrong Jones." Yeah. <laughs> I needed you to hear that. <laughs> Appreciate that. <laughs> Let me see. Okay. Lord. Okay, so Scott, Hollywood uncle Jimmy Stewart is tells Mary, like, don't marry Darnley. Um <laughs> that's the scene. It, it's good advice. She should have listened. Yeah, yeah. Just um, that. England. The movie ends. <laughs> Everything is better. <laughs> England. Um, Cecil is like Talking to Elizabeth, he's like, Darnley is going to marry Mary, and this is bad news. You need to implore her to marry Bobby Duds. How is she going to do that? How is anyone going to do that? 
like get your like graphic novel spies to like do <laughs> like how is this version of elizabeth it's like you need to convince mary like how is she like she's busy doing arts and crafts man you're the one with the wig full of secrets you do something yeah yeah like you're asking her like elizabeth could you do something like no come on no she can't she's sad <laughs> she can't do anything she's busy she has scars now she's not pretty what's she gonna do okay scotland mary is like dudley is her puppet that's the scene <laughs> um england Cecil is like, you must forbid this marriage. Scotland. Um, Darnley is on his horse, and he and Mary, there's like a crowd of people all riding horses, and Darnley like comes up on his horse next to Mary, and then someone, I think Hollywood icon Jimmy Stewart is like, well, you can't ride in front of her. She's the queen. And he's like, mm, can't I, though? And then they go riding off, and she's always slightly ahead of him. Anyway. That felt like Darnley. I was okay with that. Yeah, yeah. And this is the first scene with like the sun in the whole movie. Right. It's sunny out. We don't know what to do. It's sunny. Sersha Ronan's red wig. It's such a beautiful color in the sun. She's wearing this like beautiful like royal blue dress. I was just like, look at these colors. My eyes were just like, Ooh, we've been starving. Um. Anyway, so she's like, are we going to get married now or what? And he's like, shouldn't the man be the one who asks? And she's like, so ask. It's a cute scene, honestly. Um. And so he's I like, will you marry me? And she's like, okay. I need to step away because it's, it's just war. Okay. <laughs> we'll carry on. <laughs> I believe in you. I'll be right back. We got this. Okay. So, um, Mary and Darnley now engaged. And then um, Randy is like, oh, Randy is in Scotland again. Randy is just like here, there. He's just showing up places. He's just, you never know where you're going to find Randy. At the moment, he's in Scotland. And he's like, Darnley is not an acceptable husband for you. And Mary's like, who the fuck are you? Like, <laughs> no. Like, who cares what you think? Bothwell is lurking nearby, just like, mm, Bothwell. <laughs> Bothwell, definitely homophobic. Yes. So um, Hollywood Uck and Jimmy Stewart is just like, don't let your passion undo all the hard work you've done to make peace in this land. All the hard work he's done to make peace in this land. Okay, my guy. Anyway, so he's like, don't let your, like, the fact that you had an orgasm make you marry this guy I don't like. And he's like, if you marry him, I'll leave. And she's like, fine. That would be wonderful, actually. Please, Please. Go. And it, oh, and this is where I noticed that Hollywood actor Jimmy Stewart is wearing three fanny packs. There are so many goddamn fanny packs in this movie. Darnley has like three or four. Jimmy Stewart has like three. It's, I'm like, y'all had pockets at this point in history, right? He didn't have to do this. He's wearing them sort of like one on each hip and one over the bum. Yes. So when he stomps off, it's just kind of like like a bustle almost of like leather fanny packs. <laughs> like the earring in Shakespeare in Love. It's just like. <laughs> so he's doing the three fan effects which also lends to the whole sort of like i came here en route to coachella vibe of this guy in general anyway so he leaves england so uh cecil is talking with Liz, and he's like <laughs> this is a scene where they're like on a roof just like chatting yeah and he's like, why don't you get married? And she's like, my body, my choice. Or something. Okay. <laughs> and I choose to be a man, but not in like a trans way, because the writer doesn't understand that. Um, she's like, marriage is dangerous. And then she's like, Cecil, you're the closest thing I will ever have to a wife. <laughs> Which is a wild thing to say. This scene... Because, you know, Elizabeth famously said, like, you know, I might have the body of a woman, but inside I'm really a man. Like, that was a thing she did. But not like this. Not just like, oh, no one wants to marry me, so I guess I'll just be alone. Like She literally could have gotten married to any single man ever if she wanted. Anyway, so she's just, like, sad on a roof with Cecil. And he's like, you need to make civil war in Scotland to avoid civil war in England. And she's like, no, you do that. <laughs> I have to be sad over here. And he's like, okay, I'll take care of it. <laughs> She's really sort of like a queen in name only. Yeah. As in history, right? Yeah, famously. She did nothing. 
<laughs> just a real pushover. Yeah, she just let him take it over. <laughs> mm-hmm. From this point on, she is doing entirely just arts and crafts. So yes. Anyway, one time she looks at a horse. Don't don't, don't change her. That's true. She sadly looks at a horse baby. Like, mm, wish I had a baby. So anyway, Mary and Darnley's marriage. Um, she is in bright blue, lots of jewels. She's, I described her hair as sort of like mini mouse ears, sort of like round yeah. on top of her head. And they do that every movie we've ever watched for this podcast for Vulgar Peace Theater. They do the dancing where they're like, da, 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 walk around in a circle, old timey dance. Yep. Um, so they do the old timey dance in front of everyone. Meanwhile, this is intercut with uh, <laughs> scenes I did not know what they were. So here's what I wrote. Men on horses on beach. Cecil writes <laughs> papers. Person in cloak gets on boat. <laughs> this is civil war in Scotland. Yeah, yeah, that's it. Anyway, so now Darnley drinking a lot um, at the at the wedding. Um, he's wearing Hollywood icon Jimmy Stewart's seventeen strand necklace, which is why I thought like, is this necklace representative of a job? Or is it just... I thought maybe he fucked Hollywood icon Jimmy Stewart just soft screen and they were like trading accessories. <laughs> that is it. That yeah, is it. Yeah, probably. Anyway, so he's getting really drunk. Rizzio is there drinking his own wine, looking sad. Um, and then meanwhile, then we cut to a scene of John Knox, who's yelling to troops of like incel soldiers. And he's like, women are the worst, especially Catholic women who are queens. His name is Mary. And the men are like, I, because <laughs> they're Scottish. Um, and I was just like, did John Knox do this? I don't think John Knox rallied the troops. No, I don't think so. I think he would have liked to. Yeah. Um, anyway, so then at the wedding, a dance happens where men are all walking sideways at the same time back and forth it's the dance if you're familiar with the stage musical les mis it's the one day more step 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 dance which is apparently the only dance that they know how to do because they're men and they're not gay so they're all walking sideways in sync with each other um and then darnley who is drunk and also wearing two fanny packs like out of nowhere this movie is just like fanny packs that's what's up <laughs> um so if anyone in the uk is watching a uh, bum bag I believe you call it a bum bag. Darnley in double bum bags. Um, <laughs> so then he starts drunkenly dancing amongst the men who are going in. The, we dance in straight lines. We are straight men. And we dance in straight lines. And Darnley's like, and but I'm a gay disaster. <laughs> and I'm like, this feels homophobic to me somehow. I just like this. I don't know. I was just kind of like, this This is a Darnley energy to it. Um, where he's just like, you know what? I Like... <laughs> I'm married to her and I'm going to start being an asshole instantaneously Immediately. <laughs> at the wedding night. Like <laughs> right. She's sitting right there, right behind you. Yeah. So Darnley then steals Rizzio's loot and Mary is watching like, wait, what? <laughs> what? Who did I marry? Um, and then there's a thing. So then Darnley is sitting in a chair and like Rizzio sits in his lap or something or vice versa. I forget. And they're all just kind of like flirting and they're drunk. And Mary is like, what's going on? Yeah. A thing that the historical Rizzio totally would have done in front of the queen of Scotland. Yeah. Yeah. hundred percent. No worries about that. Rizzio, who is like the secretary of state at this point. Yeah. <laughs> um, so then cut to Darnley is in bed nude with Rizzio. Mary- because of course he is. Yeah. Eh. Um, I, I know there are rumors about that. I think it's stupid. I don't like it. Well, no. And we talked about it in the podcast, too. Like, the rumors are like, he was in bed with him, which is like, could mean they were fucking or could mean how people say, like, she's in you bed with a tobacco, tobacco lobby. You know, it's just exactly like they yeah. Anyway. Um. So, Mary. Anyway. With this the- movie is like, they were gay. Yeah. The yep. most possible. She wakes him up by pouring wine on his face, which is kind of iconic. It is. Yeah. Just to not water, wine, red wine. Um, yeah. So I do not understand what's happening. So it seems the timeline seems to be they got married that night. He got drunk and hooked up with Rizzio the morning after Mary's like, wake up, bitches. We're going to war against my brother. 
Yeah, it was a busy night. <laughs> yeah, a lot happened. So she's like, I'm going to leave you in Bothwell's care. Wild. Perhaps the first na- time the name Bothwell was spoken in this movie. Possible. Um, they have to go be an army against Hollywood icon Jimmy Stewart and John Knox. And then it cuts to a pretty badass scene of Mary practicing firing a gun while she's wearing sort of like lady armor. Which in real life she did have lady armor. I remember that was a thing that she had made. Um, so she's wearing her lady armor, practicing firing a gun. Um, the Marys beat up Rizzio for fucking Darnley. And I like that energy for them. They're just like, that's against girl code. That's the rules of <laughs> feminism. <laughs> Don't sleep with your girl's husband. Rule number one. On her wedding night. <laughs> On her wedding night. Um... So then Mary's like, David, come over here. And he's like, mm, I'm sorry. You, David. <laughs> and she's like, I can't be mad at you, David Rizzio. So please don't ever do that again. She's basically like, we he... Your- lessons today. Yeah, I think yeah. she's like, he charmed me the same as he charmed you. <laughs> he's good at oral sex. Here we both are. He's so hot. I get it. <laughs> it's fun. Here's the thing. The guy who plays Darnley in this movie doing... A f- great job. Honestly, like, better than Joellen, for instance. But um, not hot enough to get away with this. You need, like, when Rizzio is this hot, Dar- <laughs> Darnley needs to be, like, so hot. Yeah. And he's, I don't know. In the um, in the pantheon of Darnleys in films, Timothy Dalton plays him in the Vanessa Regri one, and he's, like, like too good looking to exist it's like i get it i get it he's like seven feet tall so handsome it's like yeah he would get away with a lot this guy is like i guess i guess he's the only blonde man in the movie so he does look different he does look different and i appreciate that and you know there's that thing about like when people are like long lost relatives and they don't know the relatives and then they like fall in love with each other because they feel an energy about each other and then it turns out oh my god you're actually my father or whatever or like we're twins so it's like Mary and Darnley are cousins, and maybe that like really drew. <laughs> you said those two examples like they're things that happen all the time. Do you, are you not familiar with these things? <laughs> Did you not watch the Jerry Springer show? Bring your identical twin. Thing that Allison, we didn't all know watch, Allison didn't watch nearly as much One Life to Live as we did. <laughs> no, obviously not. Or honestly, just like daytime talk shows of the nineties. Um, oh, sorry. Anyway, anyway, um, people in the chat are saying like the way that Mary supports Rizzio through this is like she's starting up a P flag chapter. Honestly, <laughs> that's the vibe it is. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, um, so the army is marching. Mary is at the front of the army, looking amazing in her like blue armor because she wears one color and that is blue. Um. Bothwell is like, I got this. I'm Bothwell. Um, and she's like, I trust you because you're my army guy. And that is it. Our platonic relationship is of a queen and her army guy. That is what is happening. Anyway, Darnley comes riding up on his horse and he's like, mm, can we talk to you? And she's like, fuck you forever. Goodbye. And like rides off. Anyway, so they're like marching to this battle and then they meet some people walking along the road and they're from the highlands. And I was like, are they from Kako the North territory. Mm-hmm. I like to think they are. I like to think that it's some Kako the North people because that plot line, I know it wouldn't fit in this movie, but I did miss that whole thing. This this movie would have done, I think, an interesting job of Hollywood icon Jimmy Stewart tricking her into like betraying them all. Anyway, so these people come. They only speak Gaelic because they're from the North. Um, and Mary's like, could you translate my words, which are basically, I am an ally. <laughs> There's nothing wrong with me in any way whatsoever. I am cool with both Catholics and Protestants, and I am the cool queen. And the guy, translate that for the Gaelic guy, and the Gaelic guy is like, yay, my queen is great. Um, oh, yeah, I wrote in my notes too. Like, you know who I miss in this movie is the Cock of the North family. Yeah. So this is the closest we get to the Highlanders. They were pretty cute. Um, anyway, meanwhile, Hollywood icon Jimmy Stewart also has pretty cool armor. It kind of looks like if David Bowie was doing a photo shoot 
wearing armor. Like it's, it practically has like lightning bolts on it. Mm-hmm. Anyway, so he's got sort of like a braid ponytail. <laughs> it's his fighting hair. His fighting hair. Well, the headband was going to get in the way. Yeah, yeah. And he would never wear a helmet, but what he wears is a braid. So um, he's leading his troops. And so Mary and her squad watch from like the woods up a hill. And then, highlight of this movie for me as well, Scottish cows. <laughs> <laughs> get in the way and they're so cute I love Locker, them I love it, Highland cows. In, oh I love Highland Scott, cows so much in Scott's language they're called coos the coos Coo. yeah so anyway the coos come in and they're so cute <laughs> and they're blocking the bridge <laughs> and I was the like the most Scottish battle that's ever happened I know I'm like the coos are loyal to Mary just like the Highlanders as well I think mm-hmm. Oh, actually, great point from Miguel, which is, you know, it's it's uh, maybe not accurate that Hollywood icon Jimmy Stewart was present <laughs> at the scene of the crime when he famously... He would never have been present. He would have been like, oh, I have to just go he visit never... my wife. <laughs> he would never have actually fought in any sort of war or nope. been involved in anything, like, physical. Nope. <laughs> No, he would like, yeah, no, I'll totally be there. I'll totally be there. Oh, I'm so sorry. My goldfish is sick. I have to go take care of that. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Great. Actually, I forgot about that, but yeah, this movie just confused me. But anyway, so the coups are there. They get in the way, and then men in kilts fight amongst trees. It is all very muddy. I don't care. Um, but from up a hill, Mary and Bothwell and Darnley are all watching. Um, Hollywood Rock and Jimmy Stewart still stuck behind the coos. <laughs> the coos really showing up for their queen here. Um, anyway, then everyone's in a river. Um, Bothwell rides around, like waving his sword and things. And then he's about to face off with Hollywood icon Jimmy Stewart. And Mary's like, oh no, don't kill my brother. Um, and then she's like, uh, stop. Everyone, stop fighting now. And then they do. And so her side wins and then the men all happily chant saying as they march back like they're not saying a douglas a douglas but like that sort of <laughs> they may as well be they probably were um there was no douglas chanting in this movie and it was my biggest disappointment there is a real honestly even when like spoiler when they go to stab darnley outside the exploded house i'm like this is the time to be yelling it's a douglas, a douglas. i was i was like a douglas <laughs> But no one heard me because I was by myself. Um, anyway, so Mary is just like, yay, I won the battle, whatever. <laughs> it's like the coups, that was me. I called them in. <laughs> that was my secret thing. Um, back at the castle at night. So Mary is being put into her nightgown by the Marys. Darnley comes in drunk as per ever in this part of the movie. The Marys wait outside sadly. And Mary is just like, knock me up, you sack of shit. I hate you. (laughs) She removes his many fanny packs. (laughs) A thing that happens in this movie. Um, And then he's like, oh, I don't uh, want to do that. Also, I'm drunk. And she's like, well, think of Rizzio. I mean, you know, she's an ally, but she's also like a bitch. And I love it. Think of Rizzio. Then he slaps her. Then she hits him back. Um, and then this turns him on. And so then they have some very, what I wrote, perfunctory intercourse. <laughs> and this is how James, <laughs> the first and sixth, <laughs> was conceived. I like this headcanon now, actually. No, 100%. Yeah. The child born of this act was, was never going to be anyone other than that guy. He was. Yeah. Um, actual worst. Uh, <laughs> anyway, I like this. So then Mary like lies on her back with her knees up to like encourage the whatever pregnancy to happen. And then I like this. Mary tells the Marys because they come in. She's like, pray for me. <laughs> and they take it literally. They all drop to their knees and <laughs> fold it. They're like, Hail nah, nah, Mary. <laughs> like they literally are praying for her because you know what? Catholics. Um, England. Um Sad, sad smallpox Elizabeth watches a baby horse suckle at a mother horse. She's like, mm. it's, I wish I was take that anything horse from Elizabeth. 
you take anything from Elizabeth's story, it's the fact that she just really loved motherhood. Yeah, yeah. You really could not hit this metaphor any harder if you didn't have, like, you need, like, Cecil to hold up a sign that's just, like, she's sad and she wants a baby. Well, Allison, what about when she then holds up a thing to her stomach, turns to the side, and looks at her oh, shadow? Like horse? You want to be pregnant with a horse? Is this Loki bullshit? What are you doing? <laughs> so she's, she's, sad, she's sad, and she doesn't even know that Mary just got knocked up in, like, the world's <laughs> she has to least be sexual sex scene. women think with their uteruses, and she felt the tingling in the forest. Oh, she did. She felt a tingling in the forest. You're right, she did. Someone just conceived. A queen. A queen just conceived. (laughs) A tutor. A tutor. (laughs) A tutor has been conceived. (laughs) Okay. A messy bitch is coming for my throne. (laughs) So, back in Scotland, like, time has passed very quickly. Um, So, the Marys come out. (laughs) This is great. This is actually very Mary Queen of Scots. So, the Marys come out and they're all like, I'm holding a big bouquet. I'm holding a big bouquet and they kind of like peel off and then Mary comes out with her bump and she's like, and I am pregnant. <laughs> <laughs> that was perfect. <laughs> dramatic bitch. I, you know, I, I like that part. Uh, I wrote historically accurate dramatics. So the 75,000 men in black, I'll name James Clapp. Mr. Bates is also there. Um, he's wearing one of the 12 strand bike chain necklaces. So like, does he have some job? What are these necklaces? They're just trendy. Um, anyway, Mary is like, I am the queen of England and Scotland and the baby is the heir to all of the above, basically. Um, and Randy is English like, ambassador is like, no, the fuck you're not. <laughs> no, Randy turns to Scottish Machiavelli and he's like, what the fuck? Did you advise her to say that? And Scottish Machiavelli is like, she doesn't listen to me. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Meanwhile, back in England. Say that. <laughs> okay. Okay. So Elizabeth was sad in the barn, right? Mm -hmm. The night that Mary was knocked up. Now, Mary is like, she's had a bump reveal. She's at least six months pregnant. Elizabeth still in the barn. (laughs) (laughs) She's been there for six months being sad about baby horses. Mary has got Darnley and Elizabeth has got the barn. So Cecil, Cecil and his wig come in. And he's like, hey, guess what? Mary's pregnant and just declared herself Queen of England. <laughs> Can you do something, Queen Elizabeth? No, I'm in a barn, you son of a bitch. She's like, no, I'm basically a pacifist now. And also, I am a horse girl. <laughs> My name is Cece. I... Call me At Cece no now. Point... <laughs> You like, point out the fact that um, Elizabeth has declared herself Queen of France at this point. Mm-hmm. <laughs> like everybody Wait, goes around declaring, declaring themselves. <laughs> everybody goes around declaring themselves like Queen of Queen or King of some other random place. Like that would not have been a blip, other than when Mary asked for help. It's yeah. Like, oh, but didn't you say you had my throne? <laughs> Oops. No, but here's the thing. I don't think Elizabeth knows that she declared herself queen of France because what she does is she holds a blanket up to her stomach and then turns to the side and then looks at her shadow and is like, "Mm, that's what I would look like. That's what my shadow would look like if I was pregnant. She's not scheming for France. (laughs) This 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 Elizabeth. Elizabeth. This Elizabeth would never. No. 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 But this Elizabeth also doesn't seem to care that Mary just declared herself (laughs) queen of England. Um, she's just like, okay, I guess. So back in Scotland, um, Mary is having a bath. I, I feel like our friend Jess, the um, prosthetics person, made a very convincing pregnant belly prosthetic. Better than the nose prosthetic. Mm-hmm. So anyway, so she's having a bath. The Marys are bathing her. And Mary is like, if it's a boy, I'll call him James. Surprise! <laughs> oh no, that comes in a minute. But first, she's oh, like, yeah. "If it's a boy, I'll call him James, the only name unlike in Scotland. All the other kings, unlike all of the other kings." And then the baby kicks, and she's like, "Oh, he likes that name. I hope so. It's the only name. The only name he's gonna get. There is it's the only option." 
Okay, so now we're in Carlisle. Hollywood Eck and Jimmy Stewart sits brooding in the rain. <laughs> no headband, no ponytail. He's just like That's how you know he's in his feelings. Mr. Bates from Downton Abbey comes in. Um, and Hollywood Eck and Jimmy Stewart is like, there's no need for your son, Darnley, after Mary has a baby because that'll be the baby king. And Mr. Bates is like, no, but my fanny pack wearing son should be king. Let's cut Mary out of this altogether. And that's how they hatch the plan to stab Rizzio. <laughs> Apparently. That's a nice logical step, I suppose. Because those lines all connect to one another. If you remove, if you remove everything about Rizzio's political influence, then murdering him makes no sense. It's just like, let's kill <laughs> mm -hmm. that gay loot guy. That'll make Darnley be king. Well, I think their logic was that um, it was Rizzio's baby. Mm. He was he's in the room. Right, right. In this movie, he was. Um, he was always in the room. I'm surprised he this movie didn't actually lover. have him actually impregnate her. Um, okay, so anyway. So Mary and Rizzio and the Marys are just like hanging out in her room and Darnley demands to come in. He's like, you let Rizzio in here and not me? So you're right. They are building up the like, you're having an affair with Rizzio plot line. He's like, give me the crown matrimonial. And Mary's like, no. <laughs> accurate. <laughs> Which is very accurate. Anyway, so then we cut to John Knox at his incel podcast recording. He says, the queen is a pole cat <laughs> who has bedded an Italian. <laughs> David Rizzio. Oh. I was just like, is this man in this movie never going to say the word whore? They're using every thesaurus synonym for the word whore. But don't worry, he does later. But I like this. Pole cat. The queen is pole a pole cat. cat. So um, anyway, all the Jameses, including Mr. Bates, Scottish Machiavelli, they surround Darnley. Kind of like when um, Rizzio was writing the letter earlier. Um, but this time they're starting Darnley and they're like, sign our paper. <laughs> sign our murder vow. Which is accurate. Um, and I want to say how much I hated this scene on Darnley's behalf. It made me mad for Darnley, which is why I'm angry. You're angry because about they were it. like you have to sign in on our murder pact, and he's like, "But I don't want to. Do. I want to be the king, but I don't want to murder people." And they basically look at him and they're like, "But if you don't kill him, people will know you're fucking him." And he's like, "Shit, I have to be a sad, closeted gay. Very well, I will sign the paper." And I'm like, "Bullshit, bullshit, darnly." Like. Yeah, have been like, "Yeah, I'll kill fucking whoever. I don't care. I'm a piece of garbage." <laughs> no one can know I'm gay. Oh, uh, that's your trauma. Bitch, please. So, Tell me you're dumb as a bag of fucking rocks. Yeah, so he signs the piece of paper. And then it's games night. So here's what's interesting. So I just recorded a thing this morning. You'll hear it in a couple weeks. Um, but I was talking with my friend Lucy, who may or may not be watching this YouTube live right now, but she worked at Hollywood when she was, she's Scottish. And when she was a student, she worked at Hollywood Palace. And I was like, tell me everything. Um, we're going to release a Patreon special episode about all the secrets of working at Hollywood Palace. And she said she's been rewatching this movie herself for various other reasons. And she said that the way that they make the room look in this movie was quite accurate. But the room itself is really, really, really small. Like she was saying, like the room where the stabbing happened, like she herself is like five feet tall. And she's like, I could imagine like five people her size fitting in there. It's like, how did all these guys get in there? And like one guy in the armor I can't believe this movie didn't put the guy in the armor. I was looking for him the whole time. I was like, where's my clanky ass weirdo? <laughs> Lord Ruthven, who's like actively dying of cancer. Where's he? <laughs> Sorry, that's not funny and I should laugh. <laughs> but that's part of the him showing up. Like he went up the sex. She, she was like, Lucy was like, I don't know how you could go up the sex stairs in a suit of armor. But like, <laughs> well, actively dying. Anyway. So they're in this little tiny room, but which was not filmed in the actual little tiny room. But I don't think it sounds like you could get camera equipment in the little tiny room. But this is kind of what it looks like. She said she said this scene looked like that room. Anyway, so they're playing cards. And as we all know, this is not who actually was there when this happened. It was not Mary and the Marys. It was like Mary and like 
Jean Gordon's mom and like her half sister Janet. But anyway, <laughs> but this movie's not going to introduce new characters. The new cinnamon. <laughs> So Mary DeMaries and David Rizzio are playing cards. And then the Douglases come up the sex stairs. They do not yell a Douglas. There's so many missed opportunities in this whole movie. Um, anyway, Bothwell is there. Oh, Bothwell's there with Mary. He just looks concerned. Instead of being like off in his other room having lunch with like Cock of the North Jr., I think. And then they had to escape through the lion pit. Anyway. <clears throat> yeah here's what i wrote in my notes you know who i bet isn't going to be here ruth finn in his armor then i followed up he is not there <laughs> oh yeah no people in the in the chat are remembering so yeah they were looking for the clanky armor the stable boy he was there because mary was a mary was a horse girl the stable boy was mm -hmm. there he was the one who like saved her from being shot anyway this movie is just like i feel like this movie looked at that room and they're like you know who fits in this room Mary and the Marys and Rizzio, and that's what the space we have. Anyway, so the men, the Douglases, all come in and they call for Rizzio. Uh, Mr. Bates grabs Mary. Um, Rizzio hides behind her and then he is stabbed. Um, somebody, potentially Scottish Machiavelli, holds a dagger to Mary, forcing her to step aside. And then Rizzio is stabbed, as we all know, 57 times <laughs> while Mary and the Marys watch. Now, that's not exactly what happened. He was stabbed 57 times in the like antechamber just outside, but you know. Close enough. This honestly, in terms of this movie, close enough. Um, oh, but then Scottish Machiavelli tells Darnley to make the final blow, and he's like, pass. <laughs> and then Mr. Bates forces him to. And there was something about they like put his Darnley's dagger in at the end, but I don't think Darnley actually. I can't picture him. He didn't actually ever do the stabbing, no. Doing any kind of physical effort. Ever. No, but they put his dagger in last just to connect him to it so everybody would know that he was connected to it. Remember that for later in the movie. Anyway, um, so Rizzio dies in his in her arms. And it's sad. It's always sad. Rizzio, like the jewel tortoise of all of our hearts. Every retelling of the story, I'm like, but perhaps Rizzio shan't be killed in this retelling. <laughs> Like, no matter what people change in the story, they never change that part. Anyway, so Mary weeps over his bloody, dying body. Darnley looks Darnley level upset, which is just kind of like... Mary is, like, weeping at the profound loss of her dear friend and the fact that this horrible thing happened. And Darnley's just kind of like, my dad yelled at me. <laughs> um, and then we see Bothwell riding off into the night. So then there's so many things. I'm glad to be talking about this with all of you because this a cleaning woman is washing up Rizzio's blood from the floor. And I'm like, is that that woman? That cleaning <laughs> woman? The cleaning woman from the story who smuggled the letters in the pea pot? But <laughs> I like to think it was. 100%. There's so many small characters in this movie that I like to imagine are actual people. So Mary and Darnley are just sitting in this room of death, which is interesting. So my friend Lucy was saying, she's just this whatever, like university student working in this room. And she's just like, this is my job. I sit in this room every day where this gruesome murder happened. <laughs> sometimes you're bored. Sometimes you just look out the window. And sometimes you're like, wow, this is the room where this like gruesome murder happened. And it still has all the same furniture. And there's a blood stain on the floor. My job is weird. Um. <laughs> Just imagine, imagine your job is just sitting in the room where this literally happened and it's still set up like that night. Like, it's like a mysterious red blood stain on the floor being, and a plaque towards the floor that's like, Rizzio died here, um, which is wild. Actually, I want to say, so there is a Tizzo Brigade member named Chloe who is in Scotland and she, I'm not sure if she made or if she acquired this little crocheted tortoise and she's planning to go to Holyrood House and leave the tortoise in the Rizzio murder yeah. spot. That makes me really that makes me really happy too. Okay, so Mary and Darnley are sitting in this death room with like the blood on the floor that happens when a man is stabbed 57 times. Um, and so they're sitting there together, which is what happened. <laughs> they had a real awkward night together. Scottish Machiavelli reports Bothwell has escaped. And Mary is like, and fuck everyone, and fuck you, and fuck you, and fuck all of this. 
Um, and they're like, ooh, did you know that your brother? <laughs> you thought he was at Coachella, but actually. In fact. He was, he was actually part of this murder squad, even though he wasn't technically here, which is his stuff. Um, and Mary's like, you see her scheming. Like, you can see her. She's like, can I have a gentlewoman with me? And I'm like, yeah, because she wants to have the thing with the peapod and the letters. And they're like, no. Um, she's like, okay, plan B. She's like, can you leave Darnley with me, my husband? And they're like, I guess. And he's just like drinking like straight from a bottle at this point. And you see Saoirse Ronan, her performance, I think, is so good here. You see her just, like, looking at him, and you see her make the plan, and then you see her, like, make a shift, and she's like, okay, let's manipulate this guy. And she does. Um, oh, but first, Hollywood icon Jimmy Stewart arrives at the castle in, like, a rain poncho. <laughs> as people had. I do love a poncho. Mm -hmm. And then he sits on her throne the fucking audacity of this bitch. Mm -mm. You're not the king Hollywood icon. Anyway, but yes, so I love seeing Mary manipulating Darnley, a canon event that occurred. So we see them sort of snuggled in bed and he's like, I didn't know anything about anything. And she's like, you know, Scottish Machiavelli and my brother will take your crown as well as mine. We should leave. And Darnley is like, okay. Like, you know, Mary is great, and I love her, and her plans are great, but also manipulating Darnley is not the hardest thing in the world to do. No. That seems like I could do that. I feel like any of us could do that. But it's great to see it happen, because Darnley thinks he's so smart, and he is not. So um, so he brings Darnley, escorts Hollywood icon Jimmy Stewart to Mary's room. Um. The two men have kind of like a bro off where they're like, burr, 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 who's going to be the king or whatever. <laughs> so, I'm so sorry. But like what happens is Darnley is like, we're going to leave now. And then they just do. <laughs> <laughs> they just leave. Um, so they just leave. <laughs> um, and they show up to where Bothwell's got everything all set up. This is like, again, the Gordons are there. I like to, to think and imagine. Um, and Darnley's like, okay, what's the plan, chaps? And Mary's <laughs> like, you're not part of the plan, you fucking disaster. And, and he's <laughs> you like- You my best friend. You're not part of our plan. You're just, <laughs> do you, really? <laughs> anyway, um, so then, okay, this part of the movie was, bananas to me this like i know they had to consolidate a lot of stuff but the way they did it was real weird okay um maybe it's not weird to you let me know so the asshole lords and hollywood icon jimmy stewart are like we need to raise an army john knox inexplicably in the room with them at this time just kind of because they're like we have david Tennant, we have to put him in every scene it's kind of like Gemma chan it's like just have i him get it you know what i was always happy to see him just have him be there um, so Hollywood icon Jimmy Stewart is like, we need England's help. She outmaneuvered us. And John Knox is like, yes, this is an example of how women are terrible. Let's ask the other women who's also a queen to help us. Yeah, John, John love that. So, um, Hollywood icon Jimmy Stewart and Scottish Machiavelli just go to Mary to talk to her. And they're like, hey, so Darnley signed this paper that he was involved with the murder. And she's like, okay, I will pardon all of you if you can show me that piece of paper. Okay. Okay. Liz, none of this seems like your business, but all right. So Elizabeth, increasingly unhinged, is looking at some artwork with Gemma Chan. This um, is the macrame we've been hinting at. Yeah, Lana, what's it, what's it called? It's like twisting paper into circles. Um, anyway, cool. so they're doing this quilling. Yes. Okay, so she's looking at this artwork, um, which, and she's just like, hmm, artwork. And Bobby Duds is like, can we do some, like, you're the queen and let's talk about, like, the war that's going on talking right now? And she's like, go conspire among yourselves. <laughs> and then. Totally normal thing I say to people all the time. <laughs> And then she's like, burn the artwork. I will do a new one. And this is where she literally is like, I'm just going to do quilling, 
twenty four seven, um, and not be a queen anymore. Scotland. So Mary goes for a walk. This is a great scene. I'm going to pass off to you, Allison, in a moment. Okay. This is where Mary goes walking with her brother and his six fanny packs, and they're like, they they make amends. And Allison, can you explain what moves him to tears when they're making amends? Yeah. The the big move that makes him be like, ah, oh, yes, I'm on your side. We are fully reconciled. Is Mary goes, I'm pregnant, you know, and I'm going to have a boy. I feel it in my bones, and I'm going to name this baby James. And he's like, an unexpected thing. You're naming the baby after me. I'm so moved. No, every man in this castle is named James. She could have been naming it after the waiter. She could have been naming it after the man who cleans the piss pot. Could have been naming it after any of the other kings. Fuck you, James. It's not about you. He starts crying. He does! And I'm like, you dumb piece of shit! <laughs> it's the only name! <sighs> yeah, so he's just like, well, I'm now forever loyal to you. <laughs> Clearly. <laughs> because of this it's rare honor of, of giving this child my extremely rare name. <laughs> James. Stuart. Um... In England, Elizabeth is just doing more quilling. She's just like <laughs> quilling up a storm. She is, if you've ever seen the movie like Water for Chocolate, there's a scene where the main character is like really, she gets really intense about knitting and she just keeps knitting and knitting. And then there's a scene where she drives off in a carriage and it shows, it's probably, I don't even know, 20 meters long knitting. It's like in Cruella when there's the like garbage dress. Anyway, she's just like, <laughs> I'm quilling and I'm not sleeping. <laughs> I have smallpox scars. <laughs> I'm doing I'm the queen great. of England. Thank you for asking. <laughs> um, okay, so back in Scotland. Mary rides in a carriage. Um, the four Marys do their like Scooby-Doo looking out the window thing. Um, and Mary writes to Elizabeth like, be my son's second mother. And then the Marys prep for childbirth. Mary gives birth. Um, you know who's not there? Margaret Fleming. Um, which whose job was to transfer the labor pains into someone else. A missed the opportunity. Shame. The witch would have been fun at this point. I would have loved anything else to happen. Um, Hepburn has just shown up. Just, oh, good. Just so everybody Hello, knows. Hepburn. Does she know that some shitty Bothwell things are about to happen? And she wants to make sure we all know she's not involved. She's being, oh, that's true. She's true. She's just like, <laughs> gosh, not, not all Hepburns. Not all Hepburns. Not all Hepburns. <laughs> Okay, so James the sixth and first is born. And Elizabeth writes to Mary. She's like, I'm happy to be his godmother. And then this is Allison. I'm, I keep calling upon you, but I know you have thoughts. But can you explain the unfurling of her arts and crafts project? She's been trying to quill the Tudor rose. That's what she's been doing this whole time, trying to make a fancy little artwork of her sigil. And at this point, when she learns that James is born, she lets all of her curly bits of paper spill down the front of her white gown down the floor and it's a giant arts and crafts miscarriage while Mary is holding her baby and I'm just sitting there like a man wrote this movie you can a man wrote this movie <laughs> it's, ugh. sometimes I'm just like you don't have to do all the metaphors you don't need the arts and crafts and the horse and the fake pregnancy and the blankets and the miscarriage you can pick one yeah. And it will still be too much. But I don't know if you noticed, Allison, but Elizabeth wishes she was pregnant. No, really? <laughs> <laughs> Does she? I got that in the subtext of the movie. It might have gone over your head. And I need to rewatch. I didn't yeah. Yeah. There's some real subtle stuff going on. Mm -hmm. Anyway, so Elizabeth, you know what? This whole movie, it's like, you know, there's a bit left, but like, Elizabeth has not once spoken out against Mary. She's been pro-Mary this whole movie. W what is even the conflict? Um, the, Why is she in this movie? The dos renas. Why? Um, anyway, so she's like, you know what? She's talking to Cecil. She's like, you know what? I think I will make Mary my heir. I think famously Elizabeth said ever. Yeah. Cecil is like, no, <laughs> don't I turned it back on you for 30 seconds. Elizabeth is like, we could do worse than having her as the next queen. <laughs> this movie is unhinged. Um, anyway, but back in Scotland, sorry, Hepburn almost fell off the table, but did not. No, oh, she, she is fine. 
Um, so Mary has received the scroll that says like Dar- it says like Darnley the king. He's like signed it. So to show that he was involved with the Rizzio murder, um, Mary is like, okay, well, fuck off forever, Darnley. And then on the screen, I was so excited. I'm like, oh, we're here already. Kirk O'Field. The most whimsically named place <laughs> in the story. And what we see is Darnley having fun with his pal, some mm. some guy. Historically very good friends with the man in this scene, yes. Yeah, they're both like um, sort of Donald Duck or Winnie the Pooh vibes. Like <laughs> shirts, no pants, both of them. <laughs> yeah. Porky pigging it. Um, they're just wearing their like little nightgowny things and no pants. Yeah, no pants. Historically and I'm like accurate, no pants. I know. I'm just like, this is this is the uh that is how he will be found. <laughs> With no pants. I saw it in a drawing. <laughs> um Edinburgh. So the asshole lords, led by at this point by Scottish Machiavelli and Bothwell, are like, Mary, please divorce. Um, Darnley. Um, Dar- Mary has at this point she's she's changed her earring, so now she's one star shaped earring. Anyway, she's like, no, I'm loyal to him. I will not become a lady Henry the Eighth. She says. I don't know why that bothers me so much. <laughs> that really bothers me. It's really gross. I will not become a lady Henry the Eighth and divorce my horrible husband. Back in Kirk O'Field, Darnley has cut his hand. <laughs> He's wearing a nightshirt and no pants. Um, Edinburgh, like that was the scene. It's like that oh, was no. the whole scene. Yeah, that was what we cut there for. Yeah, just to see that he. Pacing? I don't know. Uh, Edinburgh. So the Jameses descend on Bothwell to manipulate him to do their bidding. Kirk O'Field, just in case you weren't sure, um, <laughs> Darnley still gay. Um, still he, very gay. He is in a room. He is in a bedroom at nighttime with no pants on with a man. But just to make but sure, it wasn't know, fully clear. Until so. they kiss each other. So then they kiss each other. Yeah, now we know. And then, explosion. Um, then we see Mary waking up in Edinburgh. Back in Kirko Field, we see Darnley, not dead, runs outside, no pants. The Douglases. A Douglas. Three Douglases. <laughs> come up, they're, three all, Douglases. They're, they're all wearing cloaks. And I say they're not shouting a Douglas, but that's who they are. And then they strangle him outside. In Edinburgh, this is another highlight to me. Baby James, the actor who is suddenly, I don't know, a year and a half old, is yeah. screaming. And I feel like if there was subtitles, it would say in baby language, he's saying, avenge me, oh Lord. Oh Lord, avenge my cause, oh Lord. <laughs> that is like, it's a screaming baby. And I'm just like, that's what he's saying. It's canon. Um, he's screaming, crying. And so Bothwell arrives and tells Mary, <laughs> he's, he delivers this news so badly. He's like, someone tried to kill Darnley. Bitch, someone did kill Darnley. <laughs> what do you mean tried? He said someone tried to kill Darnley. And Mary's like, what happened? And then he's like, he is dead. <laughs> Why'd you add the extra step, my man? I don't know. Bothwell's like, come with me to my estate. Um, it's not safe for you here. Leave the baby behind. And Mary, who is wearing a denim housecoat type thing. Um, she hugs the Marys and leaves James with them still crying although in the next morning um is it morning mary's still there baby james still screaming um mary is packing up to go anyway it's a lengthy that was some bad editing yeah anyway hollywood icon jimmy stewart watches from a window like ha 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 um my plan succeeded mary gets on a horse and looks back sadly at james and then she's crying and then at the other castle, whatever, Casa Bothwell's Mojo. Bothwell's Mojo Jojo Casa. <laughs> yeah, that is where it is. Um, so some people are helping her undress for bed. I don't think it's the Marys, although I have to say I'm, I can't really tell them apart from extras in this movie because they never do anything and they're always dressed the same. But I don't think it's the Marys. Um, I think it's strangers. A knock on the door. It's Bothwell. So the Marys are like taking off her sleeve and Bothwell's at the door. They're like, oh, put the sleeve back on for modesty. Um, Can't let Bothwell see her without her sleeve. Um, Bothwell is like, Mary, oh no. He's basically like, bitches, leave. 
whoever they do. It is the Marys. <laughs> My notes are having an internal struggle. <laughs> so the Marys stand outside. Oh no, and then I write, is it the Marys? Or is it others? I don't know. I think it's the Marys. It can't not be the Marys. They're not gonna hire right, new who actors. Else would it be four other women? I was just I was just like, well, I knew that it wasn't the Marys in history. So I was like, wow, well, okay. This movie wouldn't change history. Um so Bothwell <laughs> is like, hey, you have to marry a Scottish subject whose name is me. <laughs> I know your husband was exploded <laughs> one day ago. <laughs> But let's do they're, this right now. And <laughs> they're totally going to eventually have a vote somewhere. He, he's doesn't to be like, hey, here's this scroll. <laughs> As you can see, it's signed by all the people named James, not your son, <laughs> and um, or he's your still screaming or Fine. your brother. <laughs> anyway, so she's like, are you kidding me? And then, but she's also like, wait, were you involved in this explosion strangling? And then she tries to leave. He stops her. She's like, murderer. Um, and he's like, I helped you so many times. I I don't so? know. I don't know. He's just like, I'm an incel. I listen to John Knox's podcast. Um, <laughs> he's been totally so friend zoned. Then- and now his time has come. Yeah. 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 He's like, incel no more. So he's like, he asks the Marys back in and he's like, undress her. She has consented to be my wife. And the Marys are like, has she though? Um, then cut to sad Protestant marriage ceremony, um, punctuated with bl- flashbacks of Bothwell raping her. Um, Hollywood icon Jimmy Stewart and Scottish Machiavelli both present for this ceremony? Question mark. <laughs> Were they? There's a lot of just like the guys are always working together in times where I feel like the guys weren't actually working together in real life. Well, I mean, everyone was betraying everybody every 25 minutes. It's real hard to keep a tab on. It's true. Okay. Bothwell and then, was and like, then. No one was on Bothwell's well, side. No one was in on Bothwell. No. No. Agreed that anything Bothwell ever, ever did, did except for Bothwell. <laughs> so yeah, no, no, I no feel one like would be at the Bothwell, point. no. Bothwell, yes situation. <laughs> Mary, who literally seconds ago said, I could never divorce him. That's not Catholic. <laughs> now marrying twice divorced. Well, once well, legally twice divorced. Married. <laughs> Currently still married. Divorced. <laughs> to two living women. <laughs> Bothwell. <laughs> like, does yeah, this make yeah. any lot? There's no sense to this of anyone agreeing to this. But sorry. No, that's me being distracted <laughs> by my hate. No, you're correct well. and you should say it. You're correct. <laughs> no, no, you're Allison, correct. I think Allison I think has was... Darnley covered and I take Bothwell. <laughs> that's that's fair. We have division of labor. It's all good. Yeah. I think there was one guy there was one guy on Bothwell's side and it was either Scottish Machiavelli or who is that other one? Um... I don't know if anybody was on his side, but one person wasn't fully against him. <laughs> there was one. There was one guy who went along to the Mojo Doja Castle house, and he was one of the guys <laughs> who later married one of the Marys. I think it was Scottish Machiavelli. I think he was just like, "This is shitty, mm-hmm. but I'm just going to kind of help out." So I think he was there, maybe. But Hollywood yeah, and Jimmy Stewart for me. did not <laughs> attend this wedding. Oh. Yeah, maybe it was Kako the North Jr. I'm not sure. There was one guy who went along. Anyway, Bothwell had like one quasi helper. Well, anyway, maybe if somebody then, pulled the vote, but yeah. Yeah. So John Knox, in a scene that I am <laughs> going to record and post on Instagram, calls Mary a whore of Babylon. Yeah. We've been waiting for so that. long. A whore. A whore. I, you know, I'm glad, I'm glad that this movie waited until this point to do this because it left me in kind of suspense of like, is he going to ever say this word? I wrote in my notes, thank you, I'm good. Because the there's yeah. no good ending. So David Tennant saying who it is good enough. It's as good as we get, yeah. It is, it is. As as um, we get to goodness. Oh yeah, so this is where he's talking to his like um, live podcast recording crowd. And he says... You know, the whore she had darnly killed so she could marry another man. 
And then he says, strumpet. In this really great strumpet. Scottishy way, strumpet. I love when David Tennant says strumpet. Then it does <laughs> yeah. seem like, as someone said in the chat earlier, it does seem like it's going to turn into a musical because the crowd starts going "Death to the whore" in unison, um, and sort of like it's smacking like the John table. John Knox's eleven o'clock number, <laughs> which is called "The Whore of Babylon." That yeah, was, I will watch that. Show. It would be similar to that song from Disney's "Hunchback of Notre Dame," um, Hellfire. Yeah. Except he has no sexual desire for Mary Queen nope. of Scots at all. No, nope. only for his mm -hmm. own child bride. Also not in this film. Um, Probably a good not, picture, not pictured in this film. I'm sure film. David Tennant was like, can we not do that part, please? Yeah, yeah. Okay, so Mary, um, she has a glassy-eyed stare, and she's sitting with Hollywood icon Jimmy Stewart and Bothwell having a negotiation. This is bananas. <laughs> so... Instead of doing a series of like imprisonments, on the run, escapes, they're like, what if they just sat at a table and talked it through? And that's how you know that the man who wrote this also wrote House of Cards. Because he's just like, what if they settled this around a diplomatic table? Anyway, so they're negotiating. Oh, like, well, been negotiating. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so Buffalo is like, you said that I would be king. Hollywood, I can Jimmy Stewart and Scottish Machiavelli are like jokes on you. And Mary's like, were you fool enough to trust these men? And then they're like, Mary, you must abdicate. <laughs> Mary's like, no. Um, so then Mary has a talk with her brother. Um, he's like, I will protect you as my kin. And she's like, you are no brother of mine. Even if I am naming my son after you, technically. <laughs> <laughs> There's so many other people out there. I, I was no lying. Options. <laughs> right. My son was named after James our father. father. <laughs> He's not named after you. He's named after a different James. He's after James Brown, singer, guy that was walking by that day. Named after James Blunt. He's saying you're beautiful. <laughs> um. So <laughs> I played that song while I was giving birth. Um, so Mary sits out on some rocks with one of the Marys. I'm going to guess Fleming, but I do not know. Um, so this is where Mary is reasonably is like, oh. them. No, but she's just like, what should I do? Should I abdicate? Should I not abdicate? What to do? Instead of her being like in Loch Leven, imprisoned, starved. <laughs> we just skip the whole Loch Leven Miss Miss Carrie knives out wins. closed door mystery, and I'm so pissed off. She's just like, should I abdicate? Like she was first abdicated by like Lindsay pointing a gun at her, and here she's like, mm, they're sitting by the sea, and she's like, should I abdicate? I decay. Mm, doop doop doop. Hashtag not my Mary. Uh, Who knows, and, really? Yeah. So she's like, you know, she's thinking about Elizabeth. She's like, we're like sisters, but. Uh, Queen has no sister. And then Mary Fleming is like, would you risk everything for this fucking place and these fucking nightmare men? Like, do you love Scotland? Is that what's happening? And Mary's like, we oui. in French. Because they're speaking in French. Insane. Also, a queen has no sister? Elizabeth <laughs> had a sister? You dumb piece of shit. <laughs> Great point. Well, I said she had a sister, so. <laughs> yeah, it's fair. It's fair. I, I don't oh. know, because I. We're ha we just. Surprising. You looked down, and there was a. There was a. Mina. Um, there she is. There she is. Oh, this is great. So all, all the pets have made appearances, which is good. I didn't. I didn't mislead. Um, Gertie has made a run for it, so. Jillian says justice for young Willie, and I agree. This is young Willie justice erasure. For young Willie. Yes. Erasure. And the queen of the bean. Uh, have I, I don't know if I've told the Tits Out Brigade. I've told you, Anne. Uh, my cast name is Mina, and I refer to her as Mina, queen of the bean. That is her, her pet name. She's the best. Young Willie, I think that could, that should be its own movie, the Lock Leaven scenario with the heist, the Ocean's Eleven escape. That would be a good movie of itself, I think. Who, you know who should play Young Willie is that one guy who's like 35 now but still looks like a child. What's his name? Which guy? The guy from Love Actually. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, the guy from Love Actually. Uh, Thomas Brody Sensor. Yes. Oh, you. Thomas Brody. 
don't, aren't yeah. they the same person? Freddie Highmore, Thomas Brooks? <laughs> Essentially the same. Either person. one. One of them could be Young <laughs> Willie, and one of them could be Young Willie's friend. And I'm going to say Gemma Chan for Mary Queen of Scots. Ooh, uh, I like it. I take that. And Mary Seton. Hmm. My heart said Emma Stone, but I don't think that's right. No, Mary Seton. I think I'm going to say Melanie Linsky. I keep wanting Melanie Linsky in here. Um. <laughs> Anyway, okay, so instead of all of her lock leave in prison escaping and all of this stuff, Cocko the North, anything, she just sorts this all out around the table with some discussions with these famously easy to talk to, sensible, reasonable men who despise her. Um, anyway, so meanwhile, back in England, Margot Robbie is lounging with Joe Alwyn. And <laughs> she's like, should we do anything about Mary Queen of Scots being deposed? She is like my sister. And Joe Alwyn is like, she's not your sister. He doesn't say, you had a sister <laughs> whose name was Mary. So I understand your confusion. You remember how well that went? <laughs> so he's like, she's not your sister. And Margot is like, how cruel men are. So she just feels bad for Mary is what's happening right now. She doesn't like anybody saying true things at her is the real problem. Yeah. She just wants to do her quilling and just like vibe out in the horse stables. Look at horses and think sad thoughts. I mean, I've been there too. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So <laughs> Scotland. So what's happening now is Mary has apparently decided, agreed to abdicate. And so now they're having a coronation for a little baby James, who at this point looks about five to six years old. He is aging like a child on a soap opera. Um, and so all the men are there holding pikes and spears. Hollywood icon Jimmy Stewart has his like war braid on. I guess it's his formal hair. Anyway, so it's James's coronation, I guess. And then Mary stands looking at the ocean and she says to some guy, some guy, some dude, just the guy who's there. Man number three. She's like, England doesn't look so different from Scotland. And the guy says, I, they're sisters. Do you get it, guy? <laughs> no Scottish person was production. Mm. No. A country has no sister. Um, so anyway. A girl has no name. Okay, and One then. One of them's a real bet. Mm -hmm. I do want to, I know we've been talking for literal hours, but I do want to clarify one thing. So if you look at, I believe it's the Wikipedia for this movie, it says that the movie was based on John Guy's biography because he was the only historian to claim that Elizabeth and Mary ever met in person. John Guy does not claim that in his book. <laughs> that is an untruth. Nobody has ever claimed that these two women met each other. So that is a lie. Famously never. It's kind Fam of the yeah. point of everything. But here is where they're about to meet in a little laundry shack. So, <laughs> um, so Elizabeth is riding through the woods on a horse. She's wearing this copper colored dress. It looks cool. She's wearing her, <laughs> her face is white. Her wig is Ronald McDonald. Um, she looks like a clown who is also a drag queen. Um, and inside that little house, there's lots and lots and lots of hanging white linens. <laughs> so many, so many linens. As you do, I mean, sure. You just fill your house with... Um, this is ye oldie dry cleaners, obviously. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so anyway, there's all this laundry and also Mary. Um, anyway... And, and Bessa Pardwick is there because, yes. <laughs> because, because she was just thinking of buying the property. You imagine being in um, Laundry Shack are Queen Elizabeth and Bessa Pardwick. Like, obviously, that's the first Famous. place you think of them. Three, three real shack ladies. <laughs> Out of all of them, I could see Bessa Pardwick could be in there. She's like, could I repurpose this wood and like build a gazebo with it? <laughs> is it still okay shape this would anyway so she's sort of there to be like and now elizabeth and then she leaves and so 
Elizabeth and Mary talk to each other. And apparently when they're filming this movie, um, Saoirse Ronan and Margot Robbie like didn't talk to each other during the filming. So when they filmed this scene, it could be like raw and like the first time they met each other or something. Um, okay. They're or actors. they could try acting. <laughs> right? Um, so they're just talking and they're sort of walking amongst the white laundry so they never see each other's faces because they're like walking and there's laundry and like their view of each other is obscured um and mary is wearing minimal makeup she looks like natural elizabeth is like total artifice you know describing them sorry jillian in the chat just said Bess is looking for curtains and was misled <laughs> Yeah. Is this is this the estate sale? <laughs> no. <laughs> Tapestries? Okay. Anyway, so pottery uh, bar? <laughs> <laughs> Took a wrong turn at the Joanne Fabrics. <laughs> okay, so this is the scene Mary and Elizabeth talk to each other. And so in the um uh the Vanessa Redgrave Mary Queen Scott's movie from the 70s. Like they found they had them talk to each other as well in that. Like I think it's like a if you're making this a movie, of course, it makes sense. You want them to talk to each other. But here they're like, they're going to talk to each other, but not really. They'll talk to each other from laundry. So here's what they said. I wrote it down because apparently this is the scene that everyone felt was the most important in the movie besides the menstruation scene. Okay. So Mary is like, I'm grateful for your protection. Elizabeth is like, I'm glad to grant it. Um, and so they're just like, oh, we like each other. And then Mary pulls down the laundry. Elizabeth is revealed. And Mary is like, why won't you give me an army? And then Elizabeth is like, you're safe here in England. That's all I can offer. And then they're both like, we're so lonely. Um, Mary is like, be my sister. Together we could conquer all those who doubt us. And that's the vibe of people who want a Game of Thrones to end with like Cersei teaming up with Daenerys and Sansa. And it's like, that's not how any story ever ends. But wouldn't it be nice if one time it did? Anyway. <laughs> Cersei but not this up with time. Sansa? Sorry. Not this time. That just really. Oh, yeah, Cersei. Cersei teaming up with <laughs> anybody and Daenerys being interesting. Well, that's that's a stretch, but that's too much to ask. For. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so Mary's like, like, let's do this, like hashtag girl boss, like together. And Elizabeth is like, I'm more man than woman now, but not in a queer way. That was Rizzio's <laughs> plot line. Um. Anyway, Mary is like, I will not be scolded by my inferior. And then Liz does a wig reveal. What's it called in RuPaul where you just like rip off the wig? Wig snatched. Wig snatched. She shows the fact that her hair is now like short um, and wispy. And then she's like, I was jealous of your beauty, your bravery, your motherhood. You seem to surpass me in every way. But now I see there's no cause for envy. Your gifts are your downfall. Um, so now she's okay. like, okay. Um, Elizabeth is like, you will have my protection under my terms. As long as you do not provoke my enemies, you have nothing to fear. Your fate rests in your hands. And Mary is like, if I seek to help your enemies, it's only because you pushed me into their arms. Remember, if you murder me, you murder your sister and you murder your queen. Um, and so what they, I guess have just negotiated is that Mary's going to be in house arrest with Bess and Mr. Bess for the next 25 years. I think that was, see, of all the times when they were like, we can't let these people have subtext because they won't get it. We have to make sure we underline all the metaphors. And now I'm like, can you just fucking tell me what that means? So, well, it's because they've made this movie that Elizabeth has only ever been nice to Mary. It's like, well, how can we make it that she then puts her under house arrest? We have to make that seem like she's doing something nice. But also Mary has to be mean to her so that she won't want to help her. Anyway, so Elizabeth puts her wig back on. <laughs> and she tells Bess, take her somewhere they can guard her well. And Bess is like, better not be my house. <laughs> Joke's on you, Bess of Hardwick. It is the swamp. House. Your new husband. Yeah, take her to the swamp. Um, anyway, so then we cut back to the opening scene. The candle with the nail sticking out of it. Mary being taken from her, seat, her dungeon Catholic altar into the execution room. So then we have this movie wraps up real quickly, which is the problem of trying to do this entire story in a movie and not in, for instance, 20 hours of podcasts. Um, 
Yeah, they skipped the whole all of it. They the skipped rest. everything and put in nothing. So um, Elizabeth, we get this narration, and she's like, Mary was found guilty of conspiring with Catholics to kill Elizabeth. Um, we watch we watch Elizabeth sign the death warrant in a room full of people instead of from that one guy who was the substitute who snuck it in between 25 other papers so she could pretend like she didn't do it on purpose. I thought that was important. But here she's like, I want her to die, Elizabeth. I'm proud of this. <laughs> um. Anyway, and then the audacity. Somebody earlier in the chat, I didn't say, but someone said, what are they carrying in the fanny packs? Like they seem to be full of something. And someone said, the audacity. That's correct. <laughs> carrying the audacity <laughs> around. So Elizabeth says a whole thing about feeling bad about this. And she wishes that she had sentenced Mary to death sooner to save her from years of imprisonment. Yeah, because what she was really excited about killing a queen and setting a precedent yeah, that, that killing was queens end, was not a, a thing you could do. I wish I had saved you from those years of jail by killing you sooner. Thanks for that nice thought. I appreciate it. It's, yeah. Um, okay, so let me watch Mary enter the execution room again. The Marys are with her. As we know, they weren't with her during the actual execution, but this movie, I get it. I get why they put them there. And then we watch these parallels. Elizabeth feels the snow on her face, and she weeps, and then stops weeping to be like, I have no emotions. I'm the queen now. And then Mary feels the snow on her no makeup, perfect face. Um, Not like the other girls. No, she's she doesn't have to wear makeup. She's It's like, you don't know you're beautiful, as One Direction said. Um, anyway, so she goes into the room. And just like we talked on the podcast, it's like a stage in a room with like straw on the floor. Um, and then outfit reveal. I get, you know what? I don't hate it. Like. If you're going to do something twice in the movie, the outfit reveal is the thing to do twice. That's great. And then Mary says, James, in voiceover, I think. This is Allison. Specifically, I want to know your thoughts about this. Mary says, James, my only son, I pray that in your life you will succeed where I could not. In my end is my beginning. I shall be watching you from heaven. And Can you imagine what Mary Stewart would say while she watched her dumbass son from heaven? No! <laughs> stop it, James! No! Put that down! Go home! Don't do That's this. not what I meant! <laughs> stop burning the witches! No. Stop putting sexism into the Bible! Stop I calling out! God, son, if you burn one more witch, I will smite you! <laughs> Stop fucking these dumbasses who are like your dad. <laughs> no, you should have gotten it from me. Daddy issues. And then God. we see in profile, and then the full face of goddamn James. I lost it. I was like, what? <laughs> this, this, the, this is her victory? Is James? So James? that's what you can we see James. Son, any mother would be proud of. <laughs> God. So we see James the first slash six wearing his outfit as we now know that he didn't take off until it fell apart. Um, we see James, this nightmare person, um, sitting on the throne or in a throne. Maybe I guess it's the throne of England. Um, in his black hat with a big feather. He's wearing pantaloons. So there's the only pantaloons we have seen to date. I wrote, as though him becoming king is any kind of happy ending for anybody anywhere. <laughs> right? Yeah. Well, that's not so bad. Mary died and a lot of bad stuff happened, but at least we got James as king. At least king. we got James. Thank <laughs> God for that. Bible. A lot of a lot of women in Scotland would be would not have died. Um, so then the closing scroll says, to summarize, <laughs> Mary's part in the plot to kill her cousin was disputed, but her threat to Elizabeth was extinguished with her life. 
This was before so, the letters recap. were discovered. <laughs> the plot, the oh yeah, that's true. Well, the letters are just discovered this year. But her part in the plot to kill her cousin Allison, which was the actual was that the Rodolfi plot? It the was Babington the, plot the Babington plot. plot. Yeah. That was mm-hmm. the dumb one. That was the one the where they just, one. they just yeah. framed her. Anyway. Mm-hmm. Elizabeth never married, never had a child, and never... No, no. The two things she I wanted... wanted so many horses. She never named an heir. She reigned for almost 45 years. Yes, she did, you bitch. <laughs> she named... never named an heir. <laughs> never named an heir. Apparently. Okay. Um, Mary's son James lived on. Upon Elizabeth's death, he became the monarch. So I guess they're indicating, implying he just became monarch without Elizabeth wanting it. He just did that all by himself. He just mm. walked in and they're like, ooh, pantaloons. Let's make him. Oh, look at that feather. He became the first monarch to rule both England and Scotland. The end. Well, he ruled I England hate that and the he colonized place. Scotland, but. Right? It's so gross. Ugh, don't bring James into this shit. <laughs> don't have Don't the make time. it seem like a good thing. <laughs> uh, in the chat, Jillian says she notoriously did name an heir, unfortunately. Exactly. She named the worst possible one. Had she not. We could have had Queen Arbella Stewart. How badass was that about? We could have had King Ferdinando. Come on. My boy King Ferdinando. Ferdinando. But his troop no. of tumblers or whatever the fuck. <laughs> okay, so um, to wrap up these episodes, we have a scale. So we have a Vulgar Peace Theater scale. If you haven't heard these episodes before, it's similar to the Scandal She Scale, but it's for movies. Lana is the keeper of the statistics. Um, and I truly don't know what we're going to say about this one. I have no idea where this is going to land. <laughs> yeah, it could what's go. the first it could go category? any which way. The first category is cape billowing. Okay, so cape, just to explain to everyone, cape billowing was inspired by one of the first movies we did, which was Amadeus, which had some incredible cape billowing by Salieri. And so this- He stands at the top of a a three-story staircase, and his cape is like the big fat man in Fantasia. That was was Mozart's dad. Was it? Was that Salieri pretending to be Mozart's dad? So, okay. the, he did that also. So there was numerous. Yeah, there was like both then, of them. There were there's and it was all Mozart's dad, but <laughs> cosplaying yeah. as him. Oh, they just scored highly on this, is what we're saying. <laughs> so cape billowing is encompasses all costuming, but also hair and makeup. So just kind of those aesthetics of the movie. And this is like I I mean I wish there was a judge mo- denim. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, like I mean, I don't know which way the fanny packs go either. I don't know if that's a plus or a minus. <laughs> that's a negative. All of it is a negative. There's no positives here. I didn't don't... even give her the right freaking hair until like halfway through. It was bananas. They gave her Anne of Denmark hair, and if they're going to be like, we don't want her to look like other Marys in other movies, we're going to give her the hair of her later daughter-in-law. It's like okay, but then why halfway through the movie did you give her her own hair? Why right. did you? Uh, the costumes were like, you know, we've watched movies with cheaper costumes, like Emma Deus, for instance. Although that scored highly in some ways, like they did have to borrow costumes, like they weren't all great. Oh, but that movie did have the woman with the um, swan hair. Um, I don't know this movie for some reason. I think they wanted to be like gritty, realistic, but it's like Mary Queen of Scots, from what we know from her textile, she was so into clothes and fashion and color. And this movie was just like, gray. It was so great. And there have been two amazing movies about Elizabeth that the costumes were just, like, it's the same person. Yeah, I was going to say. But somehow the costumes were, like, amazing in one and terrific in this one. And we have to give negative points for Elizabeth's wig. (laughs) That is unforgivable. I'm sorry to the, whoever was responsible for that. Way. I mean, RIP that guy who died. Um, but maybe it was supposed to look bad. I'm right. sure it no, was, he, but it was. We know he can do better because Bridgerton's yeah. wigs Bridgerton. are amazing. Bridgerton. They wanted her to look tacky and old and sad. And so they gave yeah. her this cartoon wig. 
and it was just a terrible choice. I like that we're getting some feedback from the chat as well, which includes Alyssa says Rizzio's wig was the positive. True, um, true. Jillian says if the score was tied to the physical weight of John Knox's various hairs, then it's tens across the board. Um, <laughs> it's not connected to that, but I will say a positive is the John Knox hair suit. Oh, yes. That Oh yes, yes. That's the one positive. Also, the chat should the chat should know that unlike the usual vulgar history scale, the vulgar piece theater scale can go positive or it can go yeah, negative. Yeah, it can give negative. Scores. And there's not a cap; it doesn't end at ten. Right. You can keep going in any direction. <laughs> I think like there's so much we try negative. To keep it to around me. ten, though. <laughs> Yeah. Like, if you take away, like, Mary Queen of Scots had so many cool outfit moments in life. And this movie was just, like, denim bolero jacket every day. Every day. Um, like, I think my inclination is start at negative 10 and then gradually give points back for things that they did well. So if it's negative 10, we get one point back for Rizzio's wig. So it's minus nine. I think you get two points back for John Knox. Yeah. Yeah. His yeah. whole thing was... And I'm, I, I'll agree to that. I made... I, I made fun of it this whole time, but with the Hollywood icon Jimmy Stewart, that was a memorable outfit, um, and it made him look interesting. So I would give him plus I, 0. 0.5. Half? Half. Okay. I'll, I'll agree to half. half. Plus half, just because it's like, it's really it gave us stuff to talk about. No. So, I think we could round up and make it a negative six. Does that seem fair? Negative no. six. Yeah. <laughs> No, round you think it should be worse? Seven. And it's like, do not round. <laughs> I don't know why you're being generous with this nonsense. Well, I'm going to give an extra half point for the weird dog masks because they gave us lots to talk about. Okay. I will give you the extra half point for the weird dog, the masks, dog masks orgy. Great. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. So that's Great. minus. Gertie wants points for the dog, but but the dog, that's not this category, Gertie. The actual no, dog. Gertie, is... Gertie is, is mad at me because I'm not mm -hmm. going to bed right now. So that's why you oh, see her here. Is she's like, <laughs> she's like, no, I want to go to bed. <laughs> Can't you just Gertie, turn all the, the lights sooner off? We wrap, the sooner we wrap this up, the sooner Lana's going to go to bed. <laughs> so, um, okay. So minus minus six. No. Oh, accent work. Why did we did we Next land on minus six? Accent work. Yes, yes, yes. Okay, okay, so accent work. This is interesting to me um, because Saoirse Ronan, Irish. The guy who played Darnley, Scottish. Margot Robbie and Guy Pearce, Australian. Um, so a lot of people doing an accent, and I thought they are all fine. I didn't notice any of the accents being egregious, but I never noticed that. I didn't notice anything egregious either. The only thing I noticed that I'm going to give positive points to is David Tennant. Who never gets to use his Scottish accent? So he I'm never gets to. You, you know what? Oh, that's I like to use it so well with Hooters. Strumpet, no. pull and cut. No, the best part was strumpet. That was the best. <laughs> so this is like accent work of using his own accent, and it's great. Um, nothing else. I mean, I love bad. a good brogue. David Tennant's accent does deserve recognition here i don't know how many points that is but at the least a five positive five i mean if they'd really wanted to be really impressive they would have used the pre vowel drift english accent but that wasn't going to happen so then you're using wearing the post denim lana <laughs> i know <laughs> using the using the post vowel drift british accent is is adequate and they at least gave them a brogue so I'm going to give them credit, oh, even though, even though they may, they may not deserve credit because I might have just been really basic about this. But the fact they gave Mary Queen of Scots a Scots accent, a Scottish accent, reflective of how she spoke the Scots language, um, and how Saoirse Ronan spoke French um, in a Frenchy way. I think a five is generous but fair. I, I a five overall. I'm good with a five. Lana, I, do you think that's can I take much? up at least one? English with a Scottish accent and Scots, and so like a vague, a vague Scottish accent, I don't think is like all that impressive. Oh no, like, I just mean <laughs> the fact that they chose to give her a Scottish accent instead of a French accent or a British. French. accent. They were never going to give her a French accent. They they would never. But they give could her have a given French accent. 
They could have given her a British ac- an English accent, and they didn't. Four. <laughs> Strump it, Lana. Strump it. I know. I know. That's the only points I'm giving. Okay. Okay. Four. Four and a half. Four and, four and, a, half. and a half. There we go. Okay. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I don't. I rarely it. argue these things, but this one makes me so mad. All right. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Here it is. Here it is. Historical ac- uh, audacity. Okay, just to explain for everybody. So this isn't like the highest scoring movie we've ever done is A Knight's Tale, which opens with them singing Queen's We Will Rock You in the medieval period. So we're not judging historical accuracy. We're judging the audacity. How much fun, like how much did they change history in a way that made it more interesting? Like we we reward historical <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> and then if, it, if they change it in a way that makes it less good or irritating or makes us yell a lot, those are negative. I guess. And this is I right. can't His- think of anything. Po- history doesn't do story well. Like history doesn't come in a narrative, so you have to have some yeah. level of audacity for a story to work. And here, the level of audacity that they did to Elizabeth in this movie, Jesus, is atrocious. It's unforgivable what they did to her. Like, I, I'm offended. And I don't particularly like Elizabeth. And I'm just like, what the fuck did you do? They changed so much. And this is like, I'm going to say the chat is is concurring. I think Iris said this well. Like, they changed it to be more boring. It's like, they, they were like, they took the history. And I understand it's challenging to make it a story. But they still didn't. They took out so many interesting things to make it be a story. But it still wasn't a story. Like, make it be a story. Like, make Bothwell be a character. Like... Make, make Elizabeth an antagonist or a protagonist or something. Yeah. Or, or, yeah. Um, or a character. Yeah, or a human being would be nice. Yeah. yeah. No, Miguel mentions, if anything, they changed history to make it more boring because they removed all of Mary's right. fun escape attempts. I agree. And turn it into, like, table negotiations. Katie says this has to be a high negative. They missed so many good stories slash opportunities. They kept in... Like, they took out so much interesting stuff, but what they kept was, like, not good. So, like... They kept... It was, they kept Randy and Mary Fleming, but they took out Lock Levin. That's insane. <laughs> right. It's... It's terrible. It's just terrible. The historical... the This is historical audacity in a negative way across the board. I have to... Especially... The audacity to say based on the book by John Guy. Yeah. <laughs> right? Can you the audacity? His book is good. <laughs> right. Hearing that this was based your season on. Oh, no, that's not okay. He he deserves better. <laughs> he deserves so much better. I hope he got paid very well. But um yeah, oh, it's, yeah. it's such a weird thing. Like they made such an interesting story actually quite boring. Um, <laughs> Alyssa says, if I was John Gu- Guy, I would sue. <laughs> Unfortunately. <laughs> yeah, once you sign away your rights, that's it. But, um, I... Oh, it's a heavy negative. How negative are we going? I'm, I'm is, ready is, for a negative 10, but you guys can negotiate I'm ready me for... back from the brink. <laughs> no, I think negative 10. Like, this story... I think we've never given a negative 10. Yeah, yeah. No, this is... Oh, here's another good point from Iris. She says they had details, quote, like Darnley cutting his hand on glass. Like, why was that included <laughs> in lieu of like anything interesting or plot driven? And the fact the way that they are all like, oh, Mary's like a gay ally. It's like you could do a movie about like was Rizzio gay? Was Darnley gay? Like that could be interesting to talk about, but not in this like facile way of like, no. I, hmm. I support you. Like what? I don't, like, I don't know. I don't know. Um, the closest we've ever to- gotten to negative ten is uh, the affair. A negative mm. eight. Yeah, yeah. I think this is worse than the movie. affair of the necklace. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. The affair of the necklace, tragically, because that's also such a good story. But if you haven't heard that episode, we didn't. That made Jean de Lamotte be this like heroic character instead of this dirtbag con artist grifter. She was like, no, I I should like she was this had this righteous mission. Anyway, it was 
that's not what makes that story fun. I think minus 10, 100% minus 10. I'm here for it. I don't see yeah. any reason Great. why this would not be minus 10. And it, it, it earned no points. <laughs> okay. All right. So it's... now we've we've got vibes. <laughs> Straight up vibes. <sighs> vibes. Okay. Here's what I'll say. <laughs> we've watched other movies for this that I found less that I had more trouble watching. Um, not to say that this was good or that the vibes were good, but it was um when I'm trying to think what were the movies I had more trouble watching? Maybe I have uh, Les Mis. <laughs> Les Mis. Les Mis Cyrano. and Cyrano's <laughs> vibes were rancid. <laughs> Les, Mis Les Mis and Ned Cyrano. Kelly. Le- Les Mis and Ned Kelly are the only two that we've given negative. Even Cyrano got one. And that was mostly for Peter Dinklage, because it was yeah. Cyrano was was like no, there were no vibes. Okay, this movie I would bad. It was. I would say this movie gets one vibe point, and that vibe is David Tennant showing up, leaning into his accent, wearing all that hair, and saying "strumpet" and "whore of Babylon." That's one. That's one vibe point. Okay. But can we give is it negative an extra otherwise? Half a point for best of Hardwick? What did you want a vibe point for, Allison? Half a point for Best of Hardwick. Like, best of Hardwick. Oh, yeah. Said yeah some, no, that was good. Said it, there's some expert casting for, for Best of Hardwick. And she was giving. And all she brought best. was vibes because they gave her nothing to do. And she was she, she was vibes. Did she even get a line? Yes. Like, did she even get a line? I don't think so. She might, she have, might have said, my queen is coming. Yeah, when she went into the like laundry shack, she might have been like, oh, hey, someone, so you have a visitor. Um, um, Miguel mentions the only scene I was vibing was the dance scene after the wedding when Darnley immediately shows his gay drunk colors and Mary's like, WTF. Oh, yeah, the um, look Mary gave in that scene is like, oh, shit, what have I just done? That was beautiful. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I mean, it's so I don't give it negative vibes points. Like, I think it's a zero. Like, it's not negative vibes the way that, like, um, Lee Miz was. But I think the vibes aren't there. It's like an absence of vibes, which is where yeah, I would the say, Grill like, King one. also got a one. I don't, I don't think yeah. it deserves more than a one. No, I think a one, a and that one, this one encompasses Gemma Chan, David Tennant. The gay dance scene, um, the pregnancy reveal, that all is still just one. Yeah. Like nothing is. Because all of that condensed is about a minute and a half of screen time. Yeah. So. The rest of it, it's not like anti vibes. It's just like there's not vibes to me. Yeah. That's fair. Give it a one. I think a one. Okay. So that gives us a negative 10 and a half, making it. <laughs> Number negative, uh, number two from the bottom between Dinklage's Cyrano with its negative nine and Lay Miz with its no, negative that. 15. That's where it belongs. We will never beat Lay Miz for negative vibes. I do think I came in too hot right out of the gate. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that, and that, that brings... is where it belongs. And it's kind of like the basement of just like yeah. movies that it's, you know, there's movies that are fun to watch and there's movies that are just like a slog. And like, I would not recommend any of these three movies personally. <laughs> no, I would not. That brings but I'm sure glad we watched it. That, oh, that brings Anne's relative rel- score to 10 and a third, while Allison's is nine and a quarter, 9.4. And mine is Close. still a healthy 15.37. That's because each of us, whichever one of us, like, chooses the movie, that's, like, our movie. That's, like, our champion. So Allison and I are both kind of, like, doggy paddling here in the back. And Lana's just... <laughs> and I got, I got to defend myself. Is that I either pick movies that are extremely high scoring or <laughs> the lowest possible score. And that's why my average is fucked up. Because I also have the highest scoring. Movie. Which is The Knight's Tale, yeah. You also have the, yeah. Yeah. You also have the averagest. <laughs> you have the middlest you score know. as well. In Anastasia. I'm going for that mean median mode thing. <laughs> Perfect. 
Yeah. I have more so, in the top, and then I have Dick Nitch's Cyrano dragging my scores down. Which, to be fair, you <laughs> had not seen before, so you didn't know. Yeah. Yeah. That, no, we had that was several my, movies that, was, that none of us had watched. <laughs> That's true. Um, I do want to say, in terms of Vulgar Peace Theater, so we recorded a bit ago uh, an episode about Chevalier, the movie about the Chevalier St. George, and that um, Christina is editing that right now, and it'll probably come out next week. So. If you want to see where that scored, stay tuned. Um, Allison, can you hold up your book again? Just of course. in case someone yeah. somehow forgot that that was the whole reason we're doing this. It's part of your book tour. <laughs> Hilarious. This is my the most fun stop on my book tour, which is that I just get to hang out with you guys for three hours and yell about John Knox. So. Yeah. So as a reminder to everybody, so there's the, if you want to talk when you have read the book or as you are reading the book, we have the Vulgar History Book Club, which is... Um, yeah, there's basically a post, so you don't need to finish the book to talk about it with the book club. Like if there's a post for like chapters one through three and then a post for like chapters like four to six. So like as you're going, we can talk about it. And I copied that from how Oprah does her book club. Um, anyway, it's free to join and you go to vulgarhistory.com slash book club. And yeah, Allison, you're still touring. You're still book touring, right? You have more I events. Am. I'm going to be in Ann Arbor, Michigan next week. I'm doing a virtual panel next weekend, so you can see me wherever you are. I'm going to Wisconsin in, like, a couple weeks. It's all on my website. I don't remember what the days are or what the places are, but my website does. You're going so. all over. Love it. Love it. And if and when any of you go to these events, please identify yourself, because Allison met a Tits Out Brigade member. I met a Tits Out Brig Brigadier at my book launch this week, and it made me the happiest person in the world. I just, like yelled tits out at them and everyone else in the bookstore was like what the fuck are you talking and about and she she got a picture with you and you told me you felt like madonna because i did yeah she's like can i take a picture and i'm like of me of my <laughs> dumb ass yes <laughs> and you signed her book tits out forever i did <laughs> so because y'all are the best exactly so if you're near any of allison's in-person events please know the delight that i vicariously feel hearing that you are meeting I texted Anne on my walk home. I was like, guess what? No, and what's funny is that that woman also messaged me, guess what? <laughs> <laughs> so I'm just like in the middle of it all. Match baking. Yes. Anyway, this has been a thousand and one hours and I'm going to go have supper now. Lana has to go to bed. Gertie is going to oh, be no. happy about um, that. Yeah. She's passed out on the table. Aw, oh, Gertie. Aww. Bedtime. There she is. <laughs> That's my Gertie. She's, so She's only seven months. She She's she massive. did very well. Yeah. She did great. She only tried to eat your cup for about an hour. <laughs> she she was one. I mean, She's doing better now. She's great. She would have been girl. amazing. <laughs> As an honorary, so now we each have an honorary, well, not even honorary, we each have a pet who is present for all these recordings as well. Anyway, thank you so much, everybody, for, thank you, thank you, Alison, thank you, Lana, for doing this, thank you, um, chat people and all the people who are watching but maybe weren't on chat. Um, anyway, oh, somebody, Amber says she bought your book today, oh, we're gonna watch next time. Yay. Oh, what are we going to, oh, God. <laughs> uh the next movie that we'll be watching is a lion in winter because i am going to force Anne to like eleanor of aquitaine if it kills me and you are going to like it is the thing you just don't know you're gonna like it yet because it's an old-timey movie about ancient kings and so it sounds awful but it's just a married couple being bitches to each other at christmas with their Best. with their fucked up family <laughs> and one weird man from France. I will watch this movie. You know, the I stepson, the ex stepson. Like Lana got me to watch Tombstone, a movie about. I liked it. You liked it. Men <laughs> with mustaches, and I liked it. You can um, differentiate them. Mostly. I Mostly because one of them was Sam Elliott. <laughs> I have a thing about Eleanor of Aquitaine that Lana has recently learned <laughs> is a very serious 
avoidance of learning who she is or about her. And maybe this move, people want me to do her for the podcast. And I'm like, maybe one day if I can psychologically get through this block I have of just like, I can't, but I'll watch this movie. Okay, watch the movie. You if, won't have the block anymore. You're Catherine like, tell me about Hepburn this message. Can't, if Catherine of Hepburn can, or Catherine Hepburn can't <laughs> convince Catherine you Eleanor of Aquitaine is amazing, then I don't, I, there's no hope. There's just no hope. But I know she will. I will. She's just, I will watch she's the so movie. Messy and so bitchy. I will. So messy. I will take the notes of the movie. I trust you. Lana, I trust you. You've had so many good suggestions for me. I, I just have my own things to sort out about why I, I understand. refuse to learn about Eleanor Backwood. You don't have to do it like. You don't have to do Eleanor that like immediately. I just want you to know, know. she is awesome. I know. I know. And terrible I know. and awesome. I know. <laughs> it, like she, it, it's just... like the woman the woman divorced a guy for taking her to war and the war was boring. <laughs> She's like <laughs> Oh, that's fair. <laughs> I respect that. It's just the whole like the Tudors and the War of the Roses, like the I made a Oh no, that's board. terrible. <laughs> I made like I literally went to Staples and I bought a pin board Her and then I made cards and I put everybody's name on it with string because otherwise I couldn't understand what the War of the Roses was. And that was a lot of effort. And I feel like Eleanor of Aquitaine is gonna be effort like that. All you really need, you know the king from Robin Hood. The yeah. sucking his thumb. Yeah. Yeah. No, no, that's his that's mom. Prince John. Yeah. Oh, no, you're right. The yeah. Pri but King Prince, Richard, that was the Prince one John. that was supposed to be there. The King Richard, the, the big yeah. lion guy, and then the guy that was yeah. sucking yeah. his thumb. Those are two of her kids. Those are two of the yeah. characters okay. that will be in the movie. <laughs> mm -hmm. Is one of them Anthony Hopkins? Yes. I know Anthony Hopkins is in the movie, which I've never which seen young Anthony Hopkins. That's intriguing. And, and anyway, they're gay kid will be in it that. too. <laughs> There's a gay kid? Canonically um, gay child. <laughs> good. Um, anyway, that'll be a Christmas special. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Because Lana told me it's a Christmas movie. So. Yep. That's how I got anyway, it. Anyway, <laughs> thank you all. Thank you all for being in the Tits Out Brigade. And I would never want to talk about this movie except with other people who are just like where's Coco the North you know like I need to have people like that who understand <laughs> when the woman was cleaning the blood I'm like is that that washer woman from this like I love it I love that you're all like right there with me that that means a lot anyway thank you all for spending all this time with us and um you know pants on tits out etc do I know how to end this live stream I do not but <laughs> But I assume there's a button. Oh, there's a button. There's a button. Okay. Goodbye, everybody. Bye. There was a button. <laughs>